Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. What day is it? It is May 28th. My goodness. May is almost done. It's hard to believe that we've gotten through May. It's been how many days, months since we've all been in somewhat isolated predicaments. I am just hopping over to my chat room. Got everything set up. I think I did everything pretty good today. Went flawless, actually went relatively on time. It's 11.02, so that's good. No delays on that part. Uh, yeah, so let, let's see who we have here. We've got some YouTubers already, uh, YouTube people, and then we have one Facebook person, uh, Lucretio. Uh, sup in, what's up, bro? Back again, I see, nice. Yes, I'm back. We're, we're continuing our saga of this thing called ARC where I am going to accomplish or make attempts to accomplishing our uh, beat boards. So I, I actually had a pretty good, I felt like I, we had a really good session last uh, yesterday. Uh, we went through and designed some baboons a little bit further and then kind of got into one page of script for some beat boards. So that was fun, that was good, and we had a really good talk uh, along the way. Um, I'm trying to think anything new that's happened since yesterday. Went on a four mile run, haven't done that in a while. So the sun was perfect. Um, like I always said, it's, you know, part of your, your mental health uh, during this time is to get, you know, if you have the ability to have space and get out and run in your neighborhood to go do that. I know some of you that are city folks can't quite do that that often. Um, I fortunately live in the Pacific Northwest where we have lots of space and I have a big backyard and we have a, a park nearby that we can walk our dogs in. So that's been really, really nice for our own sanity during this, this time. So I got Joe Root saying hello. Good morning, Joe Root. Hey, thanks Joe Root again for the uh, advice on the tip for TV paint. Um, it's something I completely forgot about. Um, side note, I was making coffee this morning and I ran out of my, my favorite milk. Well, I use alternative milk because I'm vegan and I had to reheat coffee. And you know, whenever you reheat coffee, this has been sitting a long time, it doesn't quite have that, that taste that you want. It's a little, little almost there, but I have fresh baked bread as of like 15 minutes ago. So I put some peanut butter on that. And so I'm gonna counteract my coffee, my, my adequate, somewhat okay coffee with some delicious sourdough bread that my partner in crime made, Chocho. So, oh, and then I also got this little thing, um, little guy, he, he passed away. He's a little bumblebee, but he was rather large. I don't know if you can see that or not. I love bees. Like I love, love bees, especially bumblebees. Um, but he's he's fairly big. Oh, you can see the little my little mark on my thumb. That's where I hammered my my thumb with my uh, hammered my thumbnail uh, working on my attic. So, let's see if we can get the front view of this guy. He's really beautiful looking. There you go. Up. Oh, one more time. Come on, we can do it. How about if I hold him up like this? That way you can see him a little bit better. Get rid of that peanut butter on my finger. And hold him up by his, his, there we go. I don't know if that helps at all. That's still blurry. I'll get behind it, oh, there we go. So there he is, little, little bumblebee. But uh, we found him the other, uh, yesterday. So I, I like to collect these little things. I don't know if you noticed, like Aaron collects a lot of uh, bones and skulls and uh, he has a site that he goes to where they get replicas of the actual bone they make uh, molds of them and he gets a whole bunch of stuff so he just ordered a bunch of skulls uh, bird skulls for his new tutorial that's coming out we kind of grew up doing that kind of stuff um, if you're just joining me for the first time I'm just gonna look over to my chat room I am flying solo um, Aneta again is out uh, in South Africa, she's studying, a, uh, she's from South Africa, but she was supposed to go to Toronto to study because of the COVID situation. She's studying remotely, so she's just getting into that. 
Um, but she says hello to everybody. I have Mary Beth saying hello, Travis, and everyone. Hello, Mary. I just had a great conversation with Mary this morning. Um, she was asking questions about um, types of programs or tutorials that her son, who is going off to college, who also studied at the Don Bluth University, uh, you know, trying to figure out ways to kind of help him as he uh, goes into college and kind of socializes with other artists and networks. And so, um, you know, we were just bringing up ideas of how we can uh, create some more. I, I think out of that conversation, I was thinking about the uh, mentorship program that I'd like to create through Sketch to Animate, where we can we can not only have like a video conferencing time where you, you pay to basically have me be an apprentice, you be an apprentice to me and I mentor, uh, but also we create a small community. So it would be like a class-like setting where people will come online, um, we can interact with one another, but we also have an opportunity to kind of share information and also I can go over everyone's work, do draw overs, that kind of thing. And I think that might be one good thing that we want to implement in the coming months because I have to start making uh, money because <laughs> I've been off for the last almost, this will be going into January or sorry, going into June. It'll be going into my second month of kind of taking some time off to focus on sketch to animate. So I'm hoping to really kind of make something happen out of that. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, Mary Beth says, I admire people who can make bread. I always uh, make paving bricks when I try to make bread, even when even with a bread maker. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a trial and error thing. We started, when her and I first met, we started making bread together. And then now she kind of took over recently with the whole COVID thing. She had all this, uh, not just time on her hands, but she just realized that she, she started making kombucha and then bread and all kinds of stuff. And um, I get to reap the rewards, I guess. Um, but Christia says, in jail, people get so bored of making stuff out of toilet paper and toothpaste is contraband LO like bowling balls but yes I walk outside is the best yes if you can get outside that's awesome uh, Mary Beth says it's lunchtime for her which is awesome it's morning for me in great Seattle at least we have beautiful weather outside it's sunny um, you can't tell because of this setting that I have up here uh, Life Fantasy X is Chad Fields oh hi again a AMB is my teacher who is AMB uh, let's see here. I'm just looking at everything that's on here. People are already saying hello. It's great that we have this community going. Uh, we got Nunzia. We have Mona. Hello, Mona. We have uh, Dan's Jess, Dan Jaskik uh, saying hello. We have Kitchikat. We have Life Fantasy X, of course. Lucretio Marahashi. Hello, Marahashi. John Dixon says hello. Uh, we have Chad Fields and... Uh, well, I did say Nunzia, and then we have Gratz. Hello, Gratz. Good morning to you. And then Coconut Justice. Hello, Coconut Justice. I might call Coconut Justice later if he wants me to, uh, just to chit chat and kind of bring someone new in here. Since uh, I kind of, it's, it's nice to have him. He he's part of the whole Sketch Zone thing uh, podcast that he, um, he invited me into, and then we became friends. So now we hang out a lot, virtually speaking. Um, Steven, all right, Steven Marshall says hello. JJ states, or stays, sorry about that. And then Caroline Wilson, damn, Travis, now I want peanut butter. You know what? Go ahead and get some peanut butter. I'm going to have a bite. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. This is really good. Don't talk with your mouth full. Excuse me. All right. That makes my coffee so much better. I have to say, oh, Alice, good afternoon. Did you do your 100 push-ups yet? Because you know, maybe at some point, you and I, Alice, will have to do a push-up challenge. Um, Citizen Zero's in the house. Wow, we got a lot of people today. This is great. Uh, let me switch over here real quick so I can get this out of the way. New banner. <clears throat> that way it has all the proper information. Let me shrink down get back okay now my head's right in the middle if you go to my website there sketchanimate.com go check it out sign up download uh, my 
little image that I sent. As a matter of fact, somebody messaged me today and said, hey, I loved your image. I'm making a print of it and I'm hanging it on my wall. I'm like, that's awesome because I did the same thing with my artwork. So I have my artwork next to my brother's. And then up above, you see subscribe to YouTube, sketch to animate. And of course, be a member to Patreon if you like what I'm doing here. Everything I'm doing so far is free. Um, there's a lot of sweat equity involved with what I'm doing. I'm trying to teach. I will be putting together for Sketch to Animate my own paying tutorial site uh, where I'm going to be launching uh, my first Calipeg tutorial for my brother. And then hopefully in July is when I want to launch my very first paying tutorial, which we, I think I can announce it, we, I think we decided to do something on the lines of how to build your storyboard portfolio from scratch and so I'll go into topics such as action uh, what is action um, go talk about shots the different types of shots you're looking for camera angles camera mapping uh, maybe talk about comedy and, and go in depth with each one and actually go through and draw along uh, during those different phases because I have a free tutorial that talks about what you should have in your portfolio and I kind of go in depth on that back to basics one that talks about what you need to have but I don't have one that goes in depth about how to build a portfolio so hopefully you guys might like that I'm gonna go ahead and that might be my first paying tutorial uh, of course we'll make it uh, reasonable in price for everyone uh, that wants to to order that or get that so again Annette's is on the case for that um, she's doing the, all the back-end website. I don't know if you know, but she does – without her, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. I'll just be honest. She's been managing me. She's been uh, creating the website, uh, the Patreon page, uh, the YouTube presence, the Twitter, the Twitch. Oh, by the way, we need more people on Twitch. For some reason, that is like the beast of a, of a, of a place to kind of get to that next tier. So I have like 0.3 – I guess viewers when I do my live streams and I need three viewers at any given time on Twitch so if you like Twitch and you want to watch me on Twitch I'm available but apparently I can't save onto Twitch like my previous streams or any kind of video tutorials unless I make it to that next tier I've got everything else except <laughs> that one thing I don't know why they make it so difficult but um, they do so there you go so let's switch back over to Travis. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get to, um, uh, where is it, Travis and chat screen. Let's see. We'll switch over to this. I'll see if this works. Tell me if you guys like this or not. Otherwise, I'll switch back to the normal one. But I created this this morning to see if this could work. That way you can guys see your chats in the corner. I don't know if you can read it or not. Um, it's hard to read for me personally. Let's see if I can go in studio mode and, and get bigger. Uh, no, nope, still difficult for me to read, but maybe you guys can read it. As you go through the playback, you can see all the questions and everything, but I set this up to see if this could work or not. So let me know. If you don't like this, I'll switch it back to the other way. Uh, so let's go back into studio mode. Uh, so where we left off, guys? Well, I left off with boards that you see here, beat boards, story beat boards. And again, the education for today is I am taking you through the process of developing this animated pilot from script to animatic. Decided to do it live, share with you guys how I'm doing it, how I'm building it, my thought process. You guys have given me great advice along the way, like just input. Um, you've asked a lot of great questions. I really want you guys to ask more questions. Um, and I'll try to answer them as, as diligently as possible. Uh, with that being said, uh, right now we're at page, we have 16 and a half pages of script. And I've gotten through now to page, well it says right there, page 10. And so now I have to get through five and a half more, or six, six pages of script. It's actually a half a page, so it's like five and a half pages of script. Um, that I have to get through before we are at the end of our, our reigns. And again, like I said, it's like watching paint dry at times, but this is an important process to kind of, you can't chimp, you can't kind of cheat this process. You can't cheat this step. I really want to go in and do these broad stroke boards so that I can get a better sense of what I'm dealing with when it comes to the script. 
and it's it's sort of my uh, thought process. It's it's ma helping me to write notes down and come up with ideas. Um, as I go through the script, I read them to you, and then I discuss what I might do for the board. And then what after all this is done, then I'm going to step to the next level and basically go into uh, doing uh, thumbnailing, uh, camera mapping, and rough boards. So you'll get to see that live again. And the, the truth behind this is that I want to be able to be transparent with this, show you my process. Um, there's many other ways to do this, but I don't know anyone out there that's showing you how to build uh, a show like this from scratch. I and mean, I thought I'd be, you know, one of those few people that's crazy enough to do it. And people have said, well, aren't you afraid of sharing your ideas? And I'm like, no, they're my ideas. They're documented. You see them live. If you want to steal them, go ahead. Um, but I have proof that this is my show, my idea. It's okay. But I want to share it with you because I want you guys to learn and grow. And if this helps you guys to build your story and your short film or your animated series, and the beauty of it would be like, hey, uh, shout out to Travis for helping me along the way. I got a show picked up on Netflix. Thanks to all your input. And I'll be like, huh, thanks. Can you hire me? Please, please hire me. Thank you. Uh, anyways, uh, why are you a butthead? Oh, I got a question for my brother. Hey, butthead. And then he goes, why are you a butthead? I don't know. Do I have a butthead? Uh, I can't tell. Does that look like a butt? To you right there I don't know maybe hello brother speaking of brother have you guys gone to creatureartteacher.com lately you should because my brother's amazing and he basically helped me get my start so there you go I love you brother butthead Aaron blaze thank you uh, Grat says yay Aaron's on here cool uh, you two brothers are awesome. Well, thank you so much for being saying that. You know, this is uh, I'm I like to think I'm more the awesomer brother than Aaron, uh, but you know that's okay. After living in a shadow for forty something or fifty years now, shoot, I'm fifty. I got a drink to that. Hold on. All right, so here you go, flying solo. So I'm gonna go in and go to page eleven of the script. Uh, and basically read this off to you. Um, so if you want to see the previous streams, I have literally, it's part 12 of a three to four hour online live series. And I'm literally spending my time talking to you and drawing to get this thing done. I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone, get some work done, and hopefully teach something along the way. Uh, let's see here. Just so I can look over... Uh, Joe Root says, I can read the chat. It's small, but I think the other way is better. Uh, I'm okay with seeing the chat on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you said to ask more questions. Yes, ask more questions. Um, that's I, I thought I answered the question why I was a butthead. I don't think I'm a butthead. I think you're a butthead. So why are you a butthead? Um, let's, go, let's go ahead and switch back to the other one. I don't... I'm not a big fan of this either. I was trying something different where I could try to see the chat, but you know, Joe, you got a good point. Uh, I can go either way. Uh, so let's see, Travis and friends, is it? I think it is the Cintiq right here. Let's transition back to that. There you go, that's a little bit better. Um, you can at least see the screen a little bit bigger. If you guys want the chat, I can always throw it back in again. But hey, I'm learning. It's hard doing this solo when you, you don't have an assistant like your uh, your son, Dustin, who's there for you. Um, my son's in Florida somewhere, and my daughter is working. So uh, let's see. Oh, Lon Smart is in the house. Uh, we've got Ink Bro Tattoo. We got, um, let's see, anyone asking questions here? Oh, Nunzia says, aha, you're both awesome. Nice. Oh, so an F. Hey, so an F. So an F. F. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. I missed the last couple of streams, but finally caught up on it while it's live again. Woohoo! The characters look so damn good by now. I said, well, they're kind of looking good. If you if you saw the last one, I'll pop into it. I was doing these uh, designs 
live because I wasn't confident in the boards, or I'm sorry, the, the boards that I was doing with the baboons. So I wanted to go back in and again, part of the step of developing something from a script like this, especially when you don't have a lot of development artwork provided, is to develop the characters. Um, so I felt like I needed to go back into those characters and design them a little bit more. And so I did. So I, I ended up drawing these characters and felt okay with this. I had feedback from you guys seeing that I've announced that I was a little bit colorblind and, and it's nice to have feedback from other people in terms of color. I went ahead and, and chose these these colors for these characters. Um, I ended up finishing, I don't think uh, from my last live stream yesterday that I had actually finished coloring some of these. So I added those extra two images at the top right corner. And then of course for um, this one, you can notice that I did go ahead and finish coloring uh, my loose thumbnails. These are thumbnail beat boards. They're not finished. They're just uh, rough thumbnails to kind of get a general purpose of what I want to have within the pages of script that I'm doing. After which I will go in, thumbnail out, and board this actual show based on the broad stroke ideas that I have in my story beat boards. So hopefully that makes sense so far. I'll just look over to see if there's any other questions before I get started. Uh, Grat says, I can't wait to buy your video when you get it on your video, when you get your video done. Thanks, man. Uh, and again, look out for the new Calipake tutorial that's coming out through Aaron and Nick's. Nick did a great job helping, you know, producing. Aaron did a great job intimidating me while I was recording it. Um, really made me feel uncomfortable. Um, I really want to thank my brother for that. And no. Seriously, uh, I was really excited to do it with these guys. And I think we're the first time that we were able to actually record this remotely. I was able to work through OBS and they were on Zoom and I had Nick take over my computer and he actually could do the cut and transitions live while he was in Sarasota and I was in Seattle. So that was pretty awesome. So we got that going. So let's, let's go ahead and let's talk about page 11 script. Uh, where we last left the characters, they were negotiating in the vent down below to the lower right what they should do if they should get more baboons to help provide a bigger party for these other baboons, Derek and Duroc, or should they not do that? And then the other question is, should they tell Gallus, who told them adamantly from before, don't unfreeze any more baboons and don't show those baboons any place interesting. And of course, they show them one of the most interesting places in the spaceship, which is the engine room. So now the engine room is about to become a baboon party house. And these guys are in event having discussion whether or not they should do this or not. So here we go, top of page 11, Sue. And to celebrate, we can throw it the tiniest itty bitty party. And Bo goes, that's it, brilliant. Plus, then we'll have a friendship secret. And they look at each other, they smile, they do a little pinky pinky swear thing, and they giggle, and then they go off. And at that point, Duroc goes, now get ready, because it's about to get steamy up here. And Duroc pulls, out, pulls the lever labeled engine temperature, pulls it down, and with his tail, oh, actually with his tail, not with his hand, the info screen next to it goes from safe to danger, burning hot. Burp, burp, burp. He pulls the lever further, snapping it off entirely. Interior control room day. Gallus is sweating with a, while piloting in the control room. The temperature gauge is almost breaking. Gallus says, I can't believe those two. When we get to the new planet, I bet it will be filled with plenty of friends who will appreciate me and not break things. Wow, if it gets any hotter in here, I may lose my mind. Isn't that right, co-pilot? And off to the right, you cut to a fan, an actual fan, is on a dashboard panning to left and right, with a flapping post in an, fa, flapping post-it note, and it says it has a poor drawing of a, and it has a poor drawing of a smiley face that says, "You look nice today." So that's his way of having. It's almost like paying homage to uh, uh, Castaway. Uh, so we've got Gallus saying, continue, he continues on saying, you're so sweet, staring at the fan rotating with a little post-it note. And then suddenly the room turns red and lights start flashing. Frum, frum, frum. The computer goes, a 
Attention, engines are overheating and running at full speed. At this rate, Ark will collide with the comet in two minutes. And Gallus says, what a comet? Out the window, we see a gigantic, menacing comet. Gallus starts screaming, Aah! end of page 11. So now we have the buildup, right? Remember what I said before that sort of like that climactic moment, the, the sort of the inciting incident that kind of propels the, the climatic scene that kind of we're going into the fourth act now of this 11 minute short um, where uh, the guys are about to have a party room and because of the result of Dirac pulling the lever down, he has now um, put the ship into a collision course with now a giant comet that is gonna come between them and the planet that they were hoping to land on. So, any questions? Oh. Oh, Joe Root just says, I'm looking down here. Joe Root says, forgive this, but I just want to get out of my head. Do you think they miss us, the monkeys in a zoo? We used to entertain them with our silly antics. Are they bored? Hmm. You know, I miss the zoo. I wish I could go right now. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sort of hit and miss with zoos because I really feel like animals should be out in nature, but a lot of these animals can't be put back in nature. So as long as we have zoos that are adequately kept the, uh, with nice space for the animals, I think it's nice, especially going there to support them. Yeah, I think they'd probably miss us, maybe. I don't know. Probably not. If you look at uh, Yellowstone National Park, those animals don't miss us. They're having a good old time finally getting around, not being barraged by millions of tourists every year, taking pictures of them at like a death close rate. Uh, you know, really close up to them. So it's nice. They're kind of taking over the park again as it should be, but it's kind of a mixed feeling for that because I've never been to Yellowstone and I've always wanted to go. I know Aaron's been, I've never been, but I would like to go. But I like the fact that because of this, they have more freedom now. Um, Marahashi says, I feel so lucky to have to witness the process of making these beat boards before the storyboards. This is the first time I came across this term and it is enlightening, and I can see why you do it. Lucretia says, it's, it's there, it's there is nothing wrong here. Uh, it's there is nothing. Lucretia, I'm not exactly sure what that question is. I apologize. So if you let me know, um, just kind of rephrase it maybe so I can understand a little bit better. Um, so yes, the, the beat boards, like I said before, is an important process. Typically you see it in features when you develop, uh, as you're developing a script, um, uh, Aaron, I'll even talk about visual beat boards, um, especially for art direction, um, creating uh, big story beat moments so that you can kind of get a sense and feel of the story that you're trying to tell. Beat boards in this case as an independent filmmaker and someone who's creating a TV show, these beat boards are important, and like I've said before, because they give you broad strokes idea of what you want to map out for your boards. And since I don't have yet spaceship designs and I don't have all the, the concept designs for the props, I have to do this on the fly as I go through this. So beat boards are also an important step for me to kind of start thinking about what I need to have. And again, when I go back to the baboons, like I said before, these baboons, right there, I'm not gonna go much further past this in terms of the design because I don't need a lot more than this to kind of get the idea across for my storyboards. Once I start developing the characters, then uh, I, once I do the animatic, then I can start going in and developing the characters a little bit further. This is a little bit backwards because typically when you are in a development phase, let's say at Netflix or Disney or other places like that, they typically bring on prop designers, character designers, art directors on early on before they bring the story artists in to board. So by the time you start boarding, you'll have model sheets made or at least a good idea of the model sheets, either cleaned up and colored. But for this case, since I'm doing it all myself, this is enough information for me to create the characters that I need and then move forward with uh, developing them further. So again, you don't want to miss out on this part of the, the process. Again, this is an 11-minute show that is all comedy action-based, and it's completely slapstick humor. 
Um, and it's a uh, episodic, I want to say episodic, I always get this confused, episodic versus serial. One is an overall story arc, and the other is when you have one contained, so it's episodic. Each episode is its own little story point with no connection to the previous shows before and after, like Spongebob. So there you have it. So let's go into the boards. Um, I want to go ahead and I think for this moment, we really need to get um, maybe, let's go into the next phase here. We need to get, um, whew, let's see here. Sue and, uh, they can do the pinky and bite their lips. We've already shown them in this part, the lower, uh, lower right. So I don't really need to go into there. Um, I think we need to have Duroc pulling the lever down and then everything kind of like going amok from there. So we need to have that. I think I might want to do a board with Gallus sitting there sweating at the cockpit uh, with a fan next to him uh, with a little sticky note and him maybe looking over and smiling at it while he's sweating. And then maybe one more thing is we have uh, Gallus looking out the, the porthole window of the cockpit as we see um, a comet and we can smash cut into that comet uh, heading directly towards them. Um, so maybe those would be sort of the scenarios that I'll, I'll board out for this particular page. So let's get into that. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, Chris says, it's a good day. Oh yes, it is a good day. Mary Beth says, Travis, when you do beat boards, do you need to storyboard the same scene? I will eventually storyboard the same scene. Some of these I may use as a stepping board or, or, or kind of a, the next step. I might actually incorporate one of these shots in there as actual shots. Typically, I'll just use them as visual notes, um, but I don't necessarily hold to them. If it's a good angle, um, I might incorporate that idea of the camera to kind of start the sequence of boards that I'm going to do for that area. Um, but typically, I, I kind of do them as a sort of a general story note. And then I'll go in and, and really finesse and think about camera direction and uh, camera mapping, which is really, especially with TV, and when you don't have a lot of information in terms of layouts and locations, it's really good to do camera mapping which is what we'll get into once we get into the board phase. So where is my pen? There it is. Um, is there anything else to do, 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 nope, nope, nope. Oh, so an F, F, F. It's cute how you pronounce it. It's totally fine. Uh, cute. You just said cute. It's really cute. Nice. Okay, let's get going. So I said we're going to have um, Duroc, who's wearing the hat. Duroc is going to be pulling down the lever. So let's have him pull down the lever and go in there. Let's zoom into this. So we got that going. And I just want to make sure that I'm on the right layer. It looks like I am. I get the right brush. Looks like I have the right brush. Got to narrow that down a little bit. Too small. There we go. We'll do that. Um, so let's see here. How should I compose the little? Let's see. Maybe it's round-ish. Um, I'm just gonna do a rough here. Maybe lighter. Eh, I'll keep it dark. Do a rough here and try to figure out what would be a nice composition. Uh, you know, I'm, it's, it's like kind of like doing a medium shot, but I don't know if I want to do a medium shot. I, I, I feel like with these, it's almost like thinking children's book style. Uh, you want to make sure that you incorporate uh, all of the, all of the ideas in your art, um, all of the ideas from the script as much as possible. So you can't do every shot, so I have to figure out a general shot that works. And there's something here. Oh, that's it. I had lines on my my guides, my story guides here for my template. So 
And again, these templates are just really quick roughs that I put in here to block out something. They're not even. I could have made them nice and clean and even, but that's okay because it's just thumbnails. So let's see. He is pulling down a lever. Um, maybe he's turning to the guys. Maybe he's turning to the guys and he's like talking to them. And we'll get into, again, he turns away, says something to them. Oh, that's right. He doesn't use his arm. He uses his tail. Uh, let's see. Coconut just says, just finished a call. What did I miss? You missed everything, man. Just go back to your call. You don't care. Jeez, man, thought you were my friend taking calls during a live stream where I'm boring to tears, everybody. That's okay, Carlos. No, you didn't miss much. We're just getting into the first page of script. So uh, I feel like, again, this is always the hardest one is doing that first, that first one. Maybe he's, he broke it. Uh, again, you have little wires attached. He's got his tail. Um, and maybe the, the lever. Uh, we got this one control panel. Maybe it's right here. Again, I'm just trying to figure out how that lever should look. He broke it. Now you have a screen with lights around it, maybe wires going around. And again, I'll keep that loose. Maybe there's little readouts along the way, little knobs. Trying to make it look computer-like. Uh, the floor is more like this. Uh, let's see. Uh, Yanis. Oh, hey, we have Yanis here. Hello, hello, Yanis. 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 Le Dissenator. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I apologize. Um, hello to you. I am in the middle of trying to put some beat boards together for this show uh, that I'm developing live with you guys as you watch me screw up and not screw up. So um, he's, he's uh, actually since his, he's got his butt. He's got the lever, lever. Um, this is Duroc, and Duroc is like all proud of himself. And he's like, let's get this party started. Uh, we got Mr. Avatar. Hey, how you doing? Oh, Jasno. Why are you a... Oh, man, really? Really? Okay. Join the bandwagon that Aaron started. Really nice. Real real professional of you, Jasno. I'm looking at... Why am I yelling at the screen? I should be yelling at the camera. Nice, Jasno. If you don't know Jasno, Jasno is my brother from another mother. I've been friends with him for 30 years now. Uh, I am actually going to be a witness to him getting married in June. Yeah, we're going to do a little social distancing uh, wedding party. Uh, we're going to uh, witness his, his marriage, mowage, his mowage, to the lovely Dan Lin. 
uh, pretty excited about it. We we both uh, love Dan Lin a lot. She's awesome. She will definitely make him a better man. At least we hope so. But Jasno is an amazing effects animator. I've mentioned him before on this on the show, on this uh, live stream. Um, at some point, I'm going to get him on here, and we're going to kind of go over uh, how to do traditional effects. Um, and then, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if I can say it or not, guys. Uh, Dan Lin says hello. Hello, Dan Lin. I hope you're watching. Uh, slap Jasno if he gets out of hand for me, please. Let me know if you hit him. I just want to know. Just I feel good if I know you hit him for me, and that'll be awesome. So um, I believe there is talks of Mr. Jasno Francoeur to do some effects tutorials for Aaron's uh, creature art teacher. Um, I don't know if that's in the if that's a, a go yet or not, but I know they have been talking about it and they um, certainly he would be the right guy for that he is still doing traditional effects as a matter of fact he's doing it in procreate i have just convinced him jasno to go online download calipeg and start doing some effects animation for calipeg because i wanted him to kind of do some collaboration work with me um, we have been talking about doing a music video together uh, some kind of animated music video so um that would be pretty cool. Uh, not that I'm already busy with other stuff, but it would be awesome to work with him on a creative collaboration where he can actually use his uh, his traditional effects and music. So there you go. He's also a musician, really good banjo player. Uh, sings like crap, but um, yeah, just joking. Don't ever ask him to sing hallelujah, however. Uh, with Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah, don't ever ask him to do that. Don't do a request. I'm telling you now, because he will sing it to you to his heart's content. As a matter of fact, he'll probably start singing it if I get him on here live. So um, that would be funny. Uh, let's see here. Yana says, "How are you?" I said, "I'm good." Gratz says, "Sorry, quick question about model sheets character. Do the lines have to be neat uh, with control, or can they just be a clean sketch?" Um, all right, Jasno, get Calipeg today. Um, it needs to be as tied down as you want it to be, especially for the storyboard phase. When you start getting into art direction uh, for your for your show or your short that you're doing, that's when you really need to make decisions on what is the line quality that I'm going to do. What kind of line quality? What thick and thin lines? Am I doing a colored line? Am I doing it black? Am I going to do it more? hand-drawn look where it's it's tied down like a jungle book style or 101 dimensions or am i going to make it more comic book looking really clean thick and thin lines am i going to use a uh, tomb boom sort of pipeline to create my my final product these are all things that you need to figure out during that part but when it comes to doing this aspect of um developing and you know what I want to make sure of am I in the right one I am okay you you can you can choose to do however you want it if you want it to be if you feel it's enough information for you to go ahead and move forward forward with the boards um, and they have the right shape language that you want um, it's also good to have a nice size comparison if you have more than one character to kind of have a lineup sheet so make sure you have a lineup sheet a comparison lineup sheet so that you can stage each shot appropriately and make sure that you're your proportions to the characters are consistent with one another. Um, let's see here. Why is that not erasing? I don't know. Oh, because I don't know why. Why am I not in this save? Okay. I'm in the right place. Oh. That's why I see this little dot. That lasso gets me every freaking time. I get so pissed off at myself. Whenever I use the lasso tool, it could be one little dot of a, of a lasso in TV Paint, and I can't use anything, and, I, and I'm sitting there for like five minutes trying to figure out where is my drawing? Why can't I put my, my brush line down? And I realize, oh, more than likely I have the lasso tool still on. So I'm just shrinking this down a little bit, and I'm going to have maybe... Uh, Bo freaking out a little bit 
and then his again keeping this rough and then uh, a bow right here in the foreground All right. Again, if you notice, I'm still keeping this really loose and more gestural. Um, let's see. I, I was just looking up here. Nate Wim says, this is great to have on while I finish my mer mermaid animation. The Beatboards Insight helps me a ton with my own work. Thank you so much for the amazing streams. Hey, you're welcome, Nate. Um, and let me see. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing this mermaid animation, too. Um, let's see. What else? What else we got? Lola says, good evening. Hey, Lola. And good morning to you from Seattle. Um, John Dixon says, hey, Travis, how come you're using TV paint instead of Calipeg? I got both. Um, because I want to use my Wacom today. Um, and it's I started in this pipeline using TV paint. I'm going to do a combination of both. So um, I like using TV paint a lot on my desktop. And then I love, I always, I'm using exclusively uh, my iPad right now I'm using it for my chat so that's one reason I can't when I'm streaming I need another source so I'm using my iPad for chatting so I can see all of your chats on the iPad so let's see here um, I get her uh, maybe she's right here uh, and then I don't know if I like that. Maybe I'll undelete that. I'll delete that here. Uh, make that a little bit bigger. And then let's see here. Um, maybe I'll have uh, a tube that sort of busted that. Um, Derek is holding. Derek, you know, is, is sort of the taller one of the of the two. So um, he's got. He's not wearing a hat. And maybe he's walking towards everybody. Let's see, you can see I'm getting quiet. I'm getting quiet right now. I'm hunting for people. It's let's see here. All right. I feel like I want to push them back just a little bit more. And keep that right about there. And then have uh, maybe have her uh, mm, mm, grab that again. Again, I'm, I'm thinking composition, general composition with what I want to do. Um, and then maybe I'll have her, she's in the foreground, but she's off to this side. And she has a different reaction. Maybe she's, she's more excited. And then I'm just going to erase this a little bit just to get her nose in there. Because I'm doing it all in one layer, um, just because I'm trying to do this fast. Typically, I would have the layout as one layer, which I, I do have in here. Um, so she's got her eyebrows or eyelashes. And there we go. I'll erase this part. Uh, 
So I'm going in again, breaking this out, uh, breaking this all down super loose. Um, wow, it says congratulations, you've received 100 messages today with Restream. Well, that was fast. 11.52, I haven't even been doing this an hour yet. Wow, that's great, awesome. Holy smokes, I've got people actually asking questions and antagonizing me all at the same time. I love it, this is great. Please keep doing this. Um, might drop it just a little bit more, just to feel like they're at the level. He's looking, Bo's looking over at the thing that's about to say alert. I'll just put alert, or what does this, this thing says? It says, uh, danger burning hot. So let's do, let's do that. Let's do danger. Or even better, one of the things you can do in here is you can go danger uh, and say OK. I'll make that into a brush. And you can go danger. And then I can go take out this if I wanted to. And I can grab this and use the skew, the perspective tool for that. And Again, there I go with my lasso. Grab just that section. Then I can go in here, shrink it down exactly the way I want it. Danger. And then put burning hot. So we just can write um, back in here, oh, burning hot. I don't know if you can see that on my screen, but there's a tool in there that has the T on it. That is where you can grab things and write things in there, burning, burning hot. So if you haven't used um, TV paint yet, um, you can see burning hot. I need to do that in caps. Burning hot, maybe an exhalation point, and then go ahead, grab that again. Boop. And if you're just tuning in, we are doing beat boards today, guys. My continual saga of getting through one way or the other. I'm going to get through all of these pages, and we're going to have our finished beat boards done and we'll do a recap and then for those that are part of the patreon membership um, please join if you want if you like it would be great it'll help support the free tutorials that I'm providing and my live streams um, what I'm gonna do on my uh, patreon is one of the patreon members uh, one of the tiers is you get to get all the PDF and detailed notes from this particular series that I'm doing so I've already uh, I know some people that have done the uh, kind of bought into the Patreon have, have gotten the PDF. Um, I think they like it. Uh, hopefully it's helpful. Please let me know. So please join if you like. Um, Jorge says, Calipag isn't available in my country, but how much does it cost? So I can anticipate for whenever it becomes available. Yes, that is, that is an ongoing issue. Um, it has to deal with taxes. Um, a lot of Latin countries do not have uh, Calipeg. It is currently a subscription-based program um, with the option of buying it at a higher cost for the lifetime of the um, app. So as they make advances, which they are doing, this is the first phase, one of many phases that are iterations of the app. They're going to be adding a lot more things to it. It's a dollar, American dollars, uh, 99 cents American. I think it's a dollar something. It, the ch exchange rate changes daily. Um, $9.99 uh, American dollars for the, so you have $1 for a month, $9.99 for a year subscription, and then I think it's like 42 or 52 US dollars for the entire lifetime of this app. Now remember, um, the price of that is pretty reasonable. Um, they're looking to do a, f uh, I don't want to talk out of my, my derriere, 
but um, they have had um, working diligently towards trying to make a seven day trial for people that want to test it out first. I know they've had some complaints about not being able to, to test it out because it is a subscription based. Um, but I promise you the great thing about Calipag is they're, they're so very diligent about trying to work with artists and, and meet their needs. And remember, as I said before, there's four of them that are that and one guy that's coding and created this app. And we've got another person that's doing a lot of the, the brushes. And then we have two other people that are marketing uh, and doing a lot of promotions. And they're all a part of the team and they're all in their young 20s, super talented, super artist friendly, artist driven, and they're there to, to help everyone as much as they possibly can. So it, it is something that I brought up to them about the fact that they don't have this in uh, certain Latin countries. And it's unfortunate, but that's kind of where we're at. Oop, undo. What did I just do here? What did I just do? Oh, I just brought it over there. That's why. So I've got this rough right here. I might just go ahead lightly and throw in a background. Uh, again, the engine room is big. So we're going to have like that, this sort of globe type of sphere. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to approach um, this particular uh, room as in the other rooms. The cockpit, I'm starting to get a, a good idea of what I want to do. The engine room is sort of um, sort of nebulous at this point. I'm not quite sure. And then, of course, the testing room, I've already decided it's going to be it's going to be cylindrical with one one window, just a stark room. Uh, metallic looking with maybe or white uh, kind of make it I like I was watching um, if you guys don't know this um, uh, Elon Musk is trying to launch SpaceX with their first astronauts being launched into space that was ironically gonna go out yesterday and I was diligently walking watching that but they delayed it due to weather in at the Kennedy Space Center because there's a tropical depression because it's that time of year but I'm super excited and it's sort of ironic that I'm creating a film or a series that involves being going in outer space. And I love, I actually like Elon, um, Elon Musk's um, design sense for the, the, the outfits. It has very much a 2010 quality to it. And it really feels like he wanted to art aesthetically look like it came out of an old sci-fi film. And it really does. This, the spacesuits are kind of cool, really, really cool, and it sort of has a, has a minimalist-like look to it. Um, of course, you need it to be functional, and you know back in the 60s and 50s, everything was very, even up to, with the space shuttle, and you, uh, things are very um, uh, bulky and mechanical looking, and he's sort of figured out a way to make these things more aesthetically appealing. Not that that's important, but it's kind of cool. So it came, gave me some ideas as I was thinking about designing things uh, for this this show itself so um, draw more cylindrical draw more cylinders in the engine room uh, yeah I could do that cylinders in the engine room lots of cylinders in the engine room let's see here there's a cylinder there um, it's like citizen what whenever you talk why do I always listen to you I don't know why like it's like draw more Draw, okay, I'll draw more. Stop talking. Okay, I'll stop talking. Uh, let's see here. It's that people pleaser inside of me that wants to make sure everyone's okay. Um, let's see. Engine room. Make the engine room vast so maybe we can lighten it up and have things off in the distance. Keeps going. Maybe I treat it like um, a battery. Like all these cylinders are just like hot rods to for the cooling and heating of the engine itself. Who knows what this is made out of? What what fuels the rocket, the spaceship itself? Um, 
because uh, you're a good man, and it looks it looks better, maybe. <laughs> it looks better, maybe. Well, let's we'll see let's see how good it looks. Um, we're gonna go in here now and just go ahead and tackle the color on this real quick. I just want to drop some quick color in here. It's fine. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let's get my layout color first. So I'll do that, and then. Um, A little bit bigger so we can paint this faster. And again, there goes that medium tone that I always like to do. Um, I will see if I want to make that a little darker right there. Slighten it up ever so slightly. Just to start giving a little bit more pop. Again, thumbnail, thumbnail, thumbnail. Keeping it simple. What do we got here? Alice says the large ball engine that is that thing that was in page three or four in Beatboards could be turned into a disco ball in the later scene. Um, yes. Oh, Sag Sakuja. Sakuja Sen Sensei? says, are you French? I am not French. Uh, well, technically maybe French Canadian. If you go down my lineage, uh, we have a French last name that was derived from Canada. Um, so there's that. Uh, we are uh, Vermonters. My Aaron and I both come from Vermont, uh, which is, an, is a stone's throw away from Quebec and Montreal. So we have that there as well and you're gonna have a lot of French names especially in Vermont so it's not uncommon to have um, French last names there as well so I'm just trying to kind of throw in just indications of things that feel like it's a background element without really going into too much detail because um, I want to keep this part simple uh, lighten that up a little bit there we go Now we can go into the characters themselves and kind of get that out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and darken this up, him up a little bit more. I want him to have a little bit of pop. Because his tone is a little darker. And again, when you drew these types of boards, um, it's always good. Uh, I've gotten used to drawing these guys, so I kind of know the shape language and things that I want to do. But it's, when you're just getting started, it's really good to have um, this, the model sheets in front of you. Uh, whether it's on your desktop, whether it's in the, sh in the work file it, it, your, itself in whatever software program you're using, um, you can do it that way. I, since I have three monitors, I have this second monitor over here, then my iPad. Sometimes I'll, I'll put them on either one of those and use that for my reference. Uh, and post all my model sheets there. So we're going in and just trying to pop in a little bit of shadow. Again, keeping it simple, nothing fancy. I should have already been on the next page of boards, or next panel that is. But we are gonna get this done one way or the other. Any questions? Uh, Grat says, cool guys. Cool, you guys are Canadian. Me, Canadian, Italian. I'm not technically Canadian. I am, I am, was born in the States, but we have a lot of Canadians uh, with, uh, that live in, in, in uh, Vermont. Um, if you want to look at my DNA, I did a DNA test and I was Irish Welsh, 
with some German and um, a little bit of and French as well. We had a percentage of French in there as well. So, but yeah, I, I we are we are Irish, Welsh, Welsh mainly. That probably comes from my my mother's side um, in terms of her lineage. So let's see a little bit of white right there. I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit more. Again, I'm trying to set up these bee boards, and he's a light-colored baboon. And he's just busted the le lever. And I gotta make sure that I, when I color this in, that I make a point of interest to the red hot danger. So I'm gonna use red color or orange around the danger part um, for that aspect of it. Uh, what do we got here? It said, uh, Terry, hey Terry, how you doing Terry? Nice to see you. Uh, replying to Jazza Franco, Jazza, your face is a butthead. Thanks Terry. See, that's what I needed. Friends, friends for life, right Terry? Leave it to Terry to call Jasno a butthead. That is a good thing. So we've got the lever right there. Still need to make sure I have, uh, maybe just have a little orange. So let's see, yellowish orange. Uh, highlight added to him since he, the light is coming off of the the light coming is 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 going to be flashing from the danger burning hot. So I want to just throw some indication of of white or orange color in there for reflection. Again, keeping this simple, like I say, simple, right? But yet I'm going in and de doing details. But again, they're beat boards, so I'm going to choose to go as detailed or as loose as I want to. Uh, let's see here. This one goes a little lighter. He's got some sort of mechanism that he's busted off. He's a little bit darker. We'll keep him like that. Tone. And then his face is going to be a little bit darker right here. Along with their feet. Same with him. We're going to have his hands a little darker as well. Now what I'll typically do is I might go in here with a second pass and refine these. Do it um, uh, just to kind of do uh, a second sort of iteration of these boards so I can start getting used to what I'm trying to create here in the script itself. And the reason why I would do that is, just, again, it's just getting more familiar. It's just like I redrew the baboons again. I did another pass of those because I wasn't feeling comfortable with what I was doing just yet. Let's do little sparks. Um, little sparks right here. Uh, I'm going to go back down to my layout color and then add a little color to this um, portion. And then I'll add a layering effect over that. So this one will be slightly darker just so she pops out a little bit more. And then I'll make this one more red-ish. And what is the choice that I want to use? I want to get, there's this little, nice little um, tool, this, this brush has like little sparkles that looks like pixie dust or like, um, that's glowing that I like to add in here. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see here, white behind that maybe. And then more red. Make it slightly smaller. All right, I think we got something here. So I'm going to go ahead and add now some glow effects over that. Which will be 
shadow tones and also let's see if this works I'm just gonna add shadow over this guy shadow over her why is that not looking the way I want it to look Oh, it's because it's still on the wrong brush for some reason. Uh, that does not look right. Why is that doing that? Let's see here. I need to go back to this. All right, that looks better. So let's get into that. Just to add a little bit more color for more pop. See shadow tone right here, even though it's off camera. Let's add some glow at the top here. Things are going amuck. All right, so yeah, that's where we are so far. Not a whole lot to that thumbnail, but it's just sort of kind of getting the idea across that this is a danger. This is getting across the idea that this is danger red hot. Uh, this is broken and little sparkles. Let's, let's add a little white to it. I have it at the top here. A little like something's running, little electrical effects. Like something's not quite right with the engine room. Talk about a detailed thumbnail. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. It went dead on the questions. That's kind of cool. You get to let me draw. Uh, let's go back to the next page. The next panel on page 11 is he pulls a lever. The next one we are in the Gallus. Gallus is sweating. So let's have uh, Gallus in the control room and we are at the right page here. Gallus in the control room. I like I like to have this like sort of round. Control room area. Uh, let's see here. Treating like the the sh huge ship is controlled by just this little co-pilot steering wheel. Uh, it's on autopilot at the moment. So that's for manual entry into this planet's atmosphere, I guess. Still trying to figure out what I want to do design-wise for this ship, but I really, really want to kind of really push the envelope in this. Um, I might call upon some friends of mine that I know that do really good designs and ask them for their input so I can kind of get a rough... Uh, sense of design the way I want things set up correctly so this is sort of the ship and then maybe um, next to him I have uh, an old fan that looks sort of like this and it's a, a fan spinning around 
a little sticky note on it. What does it have? A smiley face? Is that what it had? Um, poor drawing of a smiley face that says, have a nice day. So maybe we can just have a little sticky, sticky note down at the bottom. Well, let's see if we can make this bigger. Lots of monitors in the control room? Is that what you're saying, Citizen Zero? Um, should I stop listening to you? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we can, I can always go back to uh, having lots more monitors. There's a, there's a lot, again, there's a lot you can do with uh, this type of stuff, uh, especially in, the, in the, this phase of developing. Um, you can have a monitor here. Uh, let's see here. I'll just I can put a monitor in the back over here. Uh, you can have a monitor here. This is sort of the, the front control room, and then you have a seat that's right here. And I, I think I wanted to have the seat roundish looking. here we can have Gallus kind of putting his hands right there let's go ahead and I'm just going to use that as a layout so I'm going to erase this guy here the hands I'm going to take out this fan again and redraw it just get um, oh there's also a straight line tool so if you ever want to get straight lines in this you can um, which makes it fun for perspective and it has an uh, in TV paint you have this grid perspective grid so if you want to use the perspective and you're not good at perspective they have a, a, a grid template that allows you to draw in perspective one point two point and three point perspective um, buttons and levers all kinds of stuff Monitors here, monitors there, monitors up everywhere. So I'm going to grab that and make a brush from it. Cut to brush. So I'll go back in and put it down in my layout, which would be. Actually, technically, it would be right here, wouldn't it? Uh, I think where I had it colored is where I was drawing. So let's create a new layer for that. I'll put it right there. Let's call that line art, line for layout. Better yet. All right, layout. So now we can go back into this. Um, boom, there you go. And I'm gonna knock this part back a little bit. So I'm gonna lighten that up. There we go. Apply. So now I've got a lighter background. Uh, Kirk Myers says, love the idea of having special buttons that nobody knows what it does, but only press it in an emergency. Alice says, maybe a sticky note that has the directional arrows for steering, uh, like Independence Day. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, those are all really, really good ideas. Um, it's funny, right now on the fly, it's... It's funny when you think you have all these great ideas and then actually when I'm sitting here looking at my monitor and actually having to create all these different ideas, my brain goes burp, blank. Maybe I just need to drink more coffee. Uh, Alice says, a perceptive grid in TV paint is a cool feature. Wish I could use that in real life. <laughs> um, yeah. 
it, it's a it's a cool feature but you know what it's, you don't need to have it in real life uh, let's get out of that there we go so I am now uh, let's see oh I hear yeah, sticky notes uh, I don't know, maybe maybe a sticky note right there like you're saying um, a little sticky note with some kind of writing on it uh, maybe another sticky note here uh, that has a little arrow to you know this and then on my layout itself let's color that in real quick let's do a light tone you can hear the printer in the background I think Cho Cho is printing something not exactly sure what she's printing but as soon as she comes in here I'll ask her oh, here she comes hello so what are you printing curious minds want to know Oh, she has an important meeting. Unlike me, guys. I don't have meetings. Chocho is very important. And I'm, not being I'm not being facetious. I'm being serious. You are an incredibly important individual. Oh, my goodness. Say hello to everybody. Hi, I'm online. <laughs> so funny she freaks out every time she doesn't realize I'm online and then she, as soon as she realizes I'm online she runs away scared I'm like why are you scared don't run away uh, let's see here uh, do you use the printer you do you use the printer as a sound effect for your control room oh that actually would be kind of a cool idea I have this really cool thing where is it um, where are you Oh, there it is. So, I I snagged this because I was I was recording separately my tutorial my audio separately, and I decided just to kind of use my microphone here for Personas uh, through, and then do my video tutorials through OBS. But I bought this Tascam, which is a great. It's an XLR, so it's got it's got phantom power. Um, it's great for going on location and isolating sounds. So when I did that way, way back in January when I was doing um, On Nuts, um, I recorded water from the river that was down the road and it isolated the sound perfectly and I was able to go in there and, and tweak it just a little bit and throw it into as sound effects. And I thought this would be great to kind of go in and start creating sounds and eventually maybe I can even do kind of like what Dustin's doing with his photography is create sound effects or get um, an, a library of sounds that I can find from the Pacific Northwest and have it um, because I like to keep things original um, if you haven't noticed even with Aaron we like to keep things original um, it's good to be that way uh, try to keep everything as original as possible if you can create the sound yourself do it if you buy you know or buy the, so the sound that you want but that task cam was about $200 um, worth worth every penny um, I really enjoy it let's see here I am liking these simple yellow stickies so we're gonna have those as yellow little stickies there you go yellow sticky white All right, Chad Field says your wife should voice one of your characters. Um, actually, yes, she should. Um, Alice says you and Coco's interaction. Uh, oh, Coco's. It's actually Chocho. She's Burmese. Uh, she's. We're technically not married. We're 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 life partners, if you will. Um, she, uh, her her. She's Burmese, so you you name it. It's Kin K H I N, Chocho C H A W C H A W. G G Y I Kin Cho Cho G. So, um, and I made a funny when I was doing my re my voice recording uh, f for the squirrel sound effects. I, I was trying to do sound effects and I was eating a celery stick and I was going Cho 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 Cho, and I just started using Cho Cho. 
sounds. And then we had a running joke with Aaron where we were doing show tunes using Chocho uh, instead of lyrics, which was kind of funny. I thought it was funny. It was funny at the time. I don't know if she thought it was that funny. But nonetheless, I thought it was hilarious. All right. So monitor, white monitor. Um, let's go. There you go. Chow chow. Yeah, C H A W space C H A W. <laughs> and funny, Alice, you go cho cho, choo choo. My my father, Marshall, that you've seen on Aaron's live streams, she goes, he, he calls her uh, cuckoo kachu. <laughs> I say cuckoo kachu because he's hey choo choo, like a choo choo train. I always go cuckoo kachu like the Beatles. Cuckoo kachu. Um, anyways, you, you can you can run with a lot of things with that. It's that's kind of hilarious. But, anyways, we got to keep going faster with this. You can hear the dogs. I love my dogs so much, and they've got so much personality, but I got to tell you, the, bro the son, the, the brother to the two, his voice is so ear-piercing. Ugh. It just, it kind of puts, like, the hair, I don't have hair on my back, but it makes me feel like I have hair on my back. This rise up. Because he he's it's he's got such an uh, ear piercing sound to his voice. Uh, little monitors. It'd be interesting to. Again, I'm trying to keep this simple. Let's maybe I need to lighten it up a little bit more. Since they're in the backdrop, let's make them blue monitors. And let's see here. Maybe we can have a little comet in the backdrop floating, flying through space. Again, simple, simple, simple. Third time's the charm. That's right, Alice. <laughs> Third time is the charm. Let's see. Oh, I hear a sound. Maybe I'm getting my my pictures today. I ordered a bunch of uh, I ordered a bunch of frames, or it could be Chocho's parents stopping in and giving us more food. I love them to death. They give us all kinds of food, and it's awesome. But sometimes we get a little too much sushi. Uh, but that's all good. But I'm expecting right now. I'm expecting some canvas prints that I, I got. And if I get them today, I might even share them with you so you can kind of see them. I thought they came out pretty cool. Or I'm hoping they came out cool. I know that the last couple ones that I did, they came out pretty nice. So there you go. There's there's the layout for that. Now I'm going to go in and draw. Uh, where are you, Fine Art? I'm going to go ahead and draw our fearless leader, our self-proclaimed uh, astronaut captain let's see here Gallus of course I'd put him right in front of that comet but we can move him Hands right here. I think. What did I? Oh no! Did I do that? Did I not do it? I did it on the wrong layer. So guess what, guys? I gotta go back and draw that again. Three times the charm. Second time around. This is where you gotta make mistakes. 
it's okay. When I do that and I redraw it, it's okay because I feel like that was just my quick gesture pass. So now I can actually go in and make this work. You probably can tell I don't, I'm not really falling in love with my drawings. So I, I, if I need to change something, I just erase it as quick as I can. As quick as I draw it, it's gone. Um, Ronnie Williford says, wait, I heard there was a butthead convention over here. <sighs> Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Yes, uh, it is. It's happening over at Aaron's place. You should go over there um, and join up for the free membership. I think he's having an exclusive offer uh, right now. Uh, speaking of, I heard uh, you're working on a new tutorial there, Ronnie. I want to see what it's all about. Ronnie's got a new tutorial that's coming out through Aaron's website. Uh, hopefully soon and very soon he'll have it done. Not exactly sure when. Um, Ronnie, just let us know what it is at going to be about. Uh, curious minds want to know what your next tutorial will be. Ronnie is an amazing painter, uh, artist, worked with us at Disney, also a great musician. Good friends with Aaron. As a matter of fact, he lives right down the street from Aaron. Not too far. Um, Carolyn Wilson knows Ronnie really well. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got a new person called Strugga Bugga. Where do I send my portfolio for hiring for this project? Uh, are you being serious? Are you just kidding? Uh, um, Strugga Bugga. I am independently doing this on my own. Um, this is this is a non-funded project at the moment. I am sharing this live stream as I progress my storyboards and um, beat boards and character designs. As I develop it, I want to share it with everyone else. And then if the show ever gets picked up, then it would be awesome. I would love to get people's portfolios to come in and maybe we can, maybe we can even get this thing done independently. <laughs> sort of serious. Well, thank you. Well, I, I'm, t I'm taking that as a compliment that you like the project so far. Um, I have to figure out, you know, the fan can be right here. How about we make the fan big? Make sure that's clear. Let's make this a lighter color. And then darken that up. I would love to get this project off the ground and working. Um, and I'm sure my writing partners would love the same thing to have that happen. Um, let's see here. It's a fan. I'm trying to draw it rough and loose. So we're going to have one more sticky, sticky that is right here. I want to make it big enough so that we can see it visually. And then the fan. The fan rotates. So just put rotating fan. And again, typically the reason why I'm kind of going a little slow on this because I'm trying to figure out logistically how I'm going to approach some of these things. And it's little drips of water or sweat. Um, maybe pools of water and sweat dripping. Uh, and then... A lot of empty space in the back here, isn't there? There's a ton of empty space in the back. That's okay. This is just a bead board. Not just a bead board, it's kind of important. But that's color right there. Let's go ahead and get, get these guys colored in so we can start making some progress. Um, I'm gonna make this a little whiter right here. And slightly darker right here. Man, Ronnie. So tell us, Ronnie, if you're still in line, what are you doing? 
Tell us, please. We want to know. Uh, wow, that's that's way far back. Where where are you, Ronnie? Oh, there he is. Uh, let let me know. Let me know what you're doing. All right. So we got this going here. Uh, it's a little bit darker. And in this case, I might indicate some orange and yellow with him, just in terms of his crest. Let's see here, his white eyes. And then lighter outfit. Let's do a little yellow for his. It's okay to have a little bit of yellow. orange and then for dripping you can make it just white tell me what practice to do you recommend to improve my sketch um to improve sketching you just got to draw a lot I mean you mean, there's, there's certain types of exercises that you can do to kind of improve yourself when it comes to um, drawing, but really there's no, there's no, um, there's nothing hiding behind the idea that if you have a sketchbook, keep a sketchbook handy with you, have a backpack, if you have your iPad, keep that with you. Um, don't leave home without a pencil, paper, sketch pad, iPad, something you can draw with. Always carry it with you no matter where you go. Because you never know when you're gonna have a moment of creativity or a moment where you wanna draw something. And so by doing that, you're always gonna be ready to do it. And just get in a habit. Just make that a habit for yourself to always have that handy. Um, stick to it and if, stick to itiveness. And we talk about, you know, the theme this week is persistence in art, persistence in your drawing. Uh, the stick to itiveness, don't give up. You just have to actually apply yourself and draw. Now, in terms of improving, you know, if there's a particular subject matter you want to draw, like animals, go to the zoo. Uh, since we don't have, we can't go to the zoo. A lot of us draw online. Find, actually, that's that's the wrong layer. Find things that are going to allow you um, to look at things of structure. Um, I like to particularly look at animals and humans. Uh, they're the best reference to kind of understand uh, anatomy and structure. Start with those. Um, if you have a pet, draw your pet. Um, if you have a partner in crime like Chocho, draw Chocho. Although she is really hard to draw, I gotta say. Really, really difficult to draw for me. Like somebody else could probably draw her, but when you're close to somebody, it's really, I don't know why it's so difficult. Um, I don't know if that I'm getting the sweat across as well, but I'm also going to write down uh, in really cheesy. Let's see here. I'm going to make that small. Uh, what does it say? It says, you look nice today. I'll just do a smiley face here. Really bad smiley face. And then maybe another sticky note that says, you look nice today. Right there. Uh, someone's a little frustrated over there. Something not printing out for you. You look nice today I know I can't hardly read that but at least I get the note across and then I'll just make it more clear later on um, that's good for that let's add a little yellow All right. 
So I've got fan blowing. Let's add a little bit of fan wind blowing, if we will. And I think fan is on the dash for painting left and right with a flapping note for drawing. Gallus is sweating with a pilot control in the pilot control room. Temperature gauge is almost breaking. Oh, that's right. We have a temperature gauge. Uh, we don't really need to indicate the temperature gauge right now. We can have it somewhere on the dashboard, maybe cut to. So what we can do, we can do a little thumbnail note right here. Uh, what if your pet, what if your pet is a guinea pig? I could get a great, I can get great at making circles. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, as a matter of fact, I was designing, helping to design guinea, guinea pigs uh, for an up and coming project. I can't talk too much about it or at all, but I was character designing. So I, I got to draw guinea pigs and all kinds of different animals, which is kind of fun. Uh, so in this case here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and have maybe some kind of cutaway on the on the 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 dash cockpit the dashboard of his cockpit here and maybe you know old school temperature um, that has the temperature indication uh, and it's flashing because it's super super hot to say cut away to close up and then we can add a little color to that. A little white. And then a little red. Uh, close up of uh, temperature gauge. So there's our uh, close-up of temperature gauge. I'll just write a little note next to that saying temperature gauge, just so I know that's that's what I'm going to be putting down. Temperature gauge. The interesting thing about it, I was just thinking about, I have only been able to spend. Um, the time that I'm doing my live streams has literally been the only time I've been able to work on this project. So I've, if you think about it, three hours times 12, uh, do the math, Travis, do the math. Uh, what is that? 12, 12 streams at three. So that's 36. So I've only spent maybe a week's worth on doing these. So that's not too, too bad. So temperature gauge, sweating, make sure I indicate, um, make sure to make sure to be clear, to be clear that Gallus is sweating. And one of the things you might want to do for if you get into, into the board phases, I might want to have sort of a pan like this, a pan where I have maybe um, Gallus is kind of sweating a lot and then he looks over. He looks over at the fan. Uh, he turns and then if we keep going further, uh, the fan is sort of like right here in his face spinning. with little notes with a smiley face or maybe the the, the note is attached something like that 
Uh, maybe we could do it that way. The note is like that, the smiley face on it. Kind of like Wilson from Castaway, and then the little note that says, you look nice. I'll just say, you look nice. Not today, just, you look nice. And then he's just sort of looking at him, smiling. Again, these are more notes to a pan. Oh, there goes my dogs. That ear piercing sound. He is barking at every little thing that goes by our house. Uh, he's sweating on the wrong side. Uh, did you forget the fan? Uh, he's sweating on the wrong side. Did I forget the fan? Uh, what what side should he be sweating on? The fan is blowing in this direction and he's sweating on the opposite side. So I just want to indicate a fan blowing by and then him sweating. So, man, you're just calling me out today, aren't you? Color tone. Uh, let's get this going here. Orange, where are you? There you are. Um, are you gonna have are you gonna have a top view like an architectural plan for the layout design when it comes to that phase? How different is this part of the production different than two D and three D? Uh, Marhashi, okay, that's good. Um, John Jackson says I know how that feels, Travis. Um, yes, uh, it's called camera mapping. Um, I'll be doing developments of different layout concepts and ideas that I'll incorporate uh, before I go into my boards. So uh, one of the, the next steps after this is going into actually sitting there and trying to figure out um, how I want to incorporate the layouts um, in this part. And then um, you use architectural renderings or designs that you want to create for your layout concepts and then you incorporate them into your uh, camera mapping so you can start laying out uh, the types of shots that you want. So I will be getting involved with that as soon as I am done figuring out what I'm doing with this. And um, again, I'll just add that. And these are, again, lots of little notes that I put for myself uh, in terms of where I'm gonna go with this, what direction I'm gonna go with these, these pa this page. Um, See, go in here, a little highlight, and then I will do sort of blow a wind kind of effect. Um, maybe add a little bit of blur oh, she's printing out a lot of stuff that would actually make a really good sound effect I should do that um, add a sound effect to that um, so wind is blowing uh, he looks over the fan uh, again simple simple notes to myself let me have uh, let me do a shadow of him. Oh. Although I gotta say, I don't like the sound of that printer. It's distracting. But that's what you have to deal with when you are working and cohabitating 
uh, when you don't go to work. And you have to work from home. You have to learn to cohabitate with your partner. Uh, let's see here, it's a little bit of a shadow. All right, let's go down to the next one. The next one is going to be, um, let's see. Gus, you're so sweet. Uh, Gus says, you're so sweet. Suddenly the room turns red and light starts flashing. Computer says, attention, the engine rooms, the what comet? Out the window, we see a gigantic menacing comet. Gala starts screaming. Um, so we can kind of look up with the computer. Uh, maybe, maybe it's Gallus is looking up. I think for this one, maybe I'll have Gallus is looking up. This is a back shot of, of the chair. Maybe his tail is in the back right here. And Gallus looks up to here. Or maybe on his monitor. So let's have the layout right here of the steering wheel. The fan is sort of in the backdrop over here. Maybe there's a monitor and he's looking down at it. And it says, uh, attention, uh, the room turns red and starts flashing. So, okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn the room red. We're gonna paint this town red. I'm gonna go ahead and redo this. Still do the same idea. He's in his chair. Um, he's looking up. A little, little bit of a tail there. Uh, looking up, we see his the fan might be, let's knock this down a little bit. The tail right here. This is his chair. We see the fan in the background. Again, with a little smiley face on it. A little sticky note. Uh, Lucretia says, hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Uh, with these drawings, you almost finished drawing a comic book, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I... Yeah, you could think of them as comic books. I mean, these are still really rough for me. Um, and I should be going a lot faster than one, what I'm going right now, but I'm also trying to think about what I'm... Um, you know, I'm really kind of first time really analyzing and trying to decide and assess what I'm going to do. So, um, but they're at least prelims to what could potentially be uh, you know, more like a comic book, if you will. Um, definitely, you know, that's, that's for sure. But, it is not. Um, I'm going to just keep this as one uh, background. Have little knobs. Make this sort of like the porthole. Actually, keep that dark because that's going to be sort of the window uh, to the outside. I have a monitor here, uh, monitor here. Maybe make this a little bit thicker. So this is in the foreground.
he looks up and now everything is going to be red. So let's go ahead and I'm going to do a gray tone. Uh, gray tone over this underneath on the tone layer. A little bit bigger. Make him darker. Is there anything you can't draw? Um, uh, is there anything I can't draw? Um, if you're an artist, um, you know, with practice, you can draw anything. And the way I look at things is if I can't see it in my head, I can't draw it. But if I can see it in my head, and right now I'm not looking at any reference, I'm just sort of making stuff up on the fly as I go. So there, there's a lot of uh, inconsistencies there with the fact that I'm, I'm kind of making things up. Um, but, you know, I like to pride myself in the idea that I've practiced enough that I can, I can, you know, draw anything that I choose to draw. Um, and, and make a point of saying, hey, if I can't see it, I can't draw it. But if I can see it, I can draw it. So I guess the answer to that was, yeah, I can, I can draw, I can try to draw anything that um, I put my mind to, but I just have that stick to itiveness. I'm one of those people that's really stubborn. Um, I don't give up until I get it right. Um, so even after this, I'll, I'll do a whole nother pass probably of these boards and figure out what I'm gonna do next. Uh, with it. Uh, Giannis says RE. Um, Giannis, what is RE? Re. That was a, a short response. Uh, maybe you decided to write something and you forgot to, and then you maybe accidentally hit that in the chat room. Let me know what that is. I would like to know. So, looking up. Uh, again, doing this fast and loose to get the point across of what I'm doing here. Um, it's now 12.59, almost 1 o'clock. That's not bad. We're still doing all right. I, I can get two pages out. I can do two pages today. That's the ticket. That's the positivity that I am looking for. Uh, dark for this just because I want to have... Uh, maybe a little bit darker. This is sort of the porthole. Maybe a little bit lighter. Dashboard of the cockpit there. This is white in the background. White on the monitors. Again, keep it loose. So I had a bluish kind of monitor thing going here. So I'll draw that. And then stars in the out the portal window. Making little happy colors. All right, let's now turn this place red. So we're gonna do, we're gonna take my shadow tone right there, no, right here. And we're gonna just make this as red without it being too, too red. I'm gonna go over that. gives more of a red tone or not. Uh, I can be a moderator. Oh, there you go, yeah. You know what, it's, it's funny. I, I wish I had someone who was, uh, you know, cause my, my 
dear Aneta is Aneta is working very hard at becoming uh, a scholar, if you will, uh, going to school, and she's not available right now to kind of do the things that I would uh, would like to have happen. Uh, I don't know if that looks red ish. I want to have. I want to make sure that it has a kind of a red feel and maybe lighten it up. Uh, use a different brush. Let's see here. Smaller. There we go. Uh, animate your drawing says hello. Wow. Okay, we have a new person in there. Hey, how you doing? Hope you're doing well over there, wherever you are. Uh, animate your drawing. I am in the middle of doing thumbnail story beat boards. Uh, trying to block out my script for this animatic that we are creating from start to finish. I have been doing an ongoing series uh, developing this show, um, kind of sharing my process, making mistakes along the way, making improvements along the way, um, but you get to see it live as I go. Um, so everything is sort of red-ish in color. Um, I'll keep it like that. So let's write a little note that black uh, cockpit turns red. Turns red, uh, computer. Announces. Uh, oh, we have a new person. Carlton Bird says, move the color wheel just a little bit more to the right. Uh, a little bit more to the right. What do you mean? Uh, as opposed to... Uh, cartoon Carlton Bird says, move the color wheel just a little bit to the right. Are you saying in terms of, uh, so you can see it better? Or move the color wheel so that I'm doing a different color? Uh, can you clarify that, Carlton? And then animate your bird, animate your drawing says, it must be work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. This is, this is an ongoing uh, process for me to figure out what I want to do. I am going to draw. I'm going to write in car computer announces, uh, attention, engine room, engines are overheating uh, for the red color. Uh, I mean, right there. More red, or like right there you're talking about. And if I did that, let's say, um, let's go back over to that one. Make that a little bigger. And we can make certain aspects of this more red. Um, and I also might want to even, in my color tone, let's see, where are you, color tone? Here we go. Lighten that up a little bit there. For my color tone, I can also add in a little bit of red like this to kind of really enhance the red idea that everything's red. And it's coming from, from the ceiling.
let's see here. It's uh, I have a question from uh, how long it takes to produce a series animate you drawing. Ah, uh, well, that's a really that's the the ultimate question to the mystery of the to life and everything we know. Um, Forty two. Uh, <laughs> 42 years no it's it's uh, depends on the project depends on the scope of what you're trying to accomplish um, you know you could spend two years in development uh, easily for a series or you could spend a year or you could spend six months um, it depends on who's developing it and um, how much um, control creative control uh, the creator of the show might have for the show itself um, Carlton says, also, I also follow your brother's channel. That's how I know about your colorblindness. <laughs> oh, thank you. You are, you know what? Now I realize you're just being nice. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. That colorblindness issues gets the best of me at times. But the thing is, once I get the right color going and the technique, I, I kind of know what I'm doing um, once that happens. So there you go. That that works a little bit better, I think. Now everything's more red. Uh, and we'll go back up to my little note here, and I'm just simply going to write, um, finish out my thought for the writing of this particular panel. Announces uh, attention engines are overheating. Heating. All right. And again, when I do, when I look at stuff like this, and you can see, I'll, I'll open it up again wide. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Carlton says you're uh, you're welcome. Um, you can see that I'm I'm simply putting together uh, quick thumbnail uh, ideas down for each page to kind of figure out my thoughts. And then I'll go in and I'll finesse them a lot more. Uh, really start thinking about color and design. Um, hopefully at some point, if we get a show picked up, I can actually get a real art director um, that can really make this shine. And, uh, uh, you know, that's called collaboration. Uh, Life Fantasy X says, when did you know you were colorblind? I guess when Aaron started making fun of me. <laughs> I mean, how else would you know? Your older brother. What are you, colorblind? Is that a green tree or are you colorblind? Why are you painting that, that tree red? It's brown. You know that, right? Like, no, didn't know that. Thanks, though. Thanks for letting me know. Um, let's see here. The last one is like, he looks out the giant wind, uh, you know, he freaks out because the, the engine, the computer says, Attention, we're colliding, about to collide with a giant uh, meteor. And then maybe this is where we have um, maybe the cockpit of the ship. Remember, I was drawing the ship, the very, very top of the ship. We can have like some sort of, uh, I'm gonna try to figure this one out here. So many different ways you can go with this. With illustrate this idea um, you know this uh, you can go you know you can he can look outside and then through the window uh, he looks at, let's look at, um, I'm trying to think here how I drew that before. What I wanted to do for the ship, I mean, he could be, you could see, uh, you know, off to the right we see this, this thing hurling in space, or, let's erase that, don't like that. I want to create some kind of really cool perspective point. Um, could we do it at the you 
you know, if I do a lot of this over the shoulder thing, um, you know, it could be uh, a bubble uh, where he's looking out and you see him freaking out. thing hurling towards him we have this kind of perspective going or hmm hmm although a colorblind is that a real is that even real um all right let's 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 get real about that so colorblindness everyone has a sense I don't think everyone sees color I absolutely identical. I think there are variations of color that under normal conditions with normal cones and then your receptors receiving that in your brain from the receptors in your in your eyes in your coronary uh, your your um, the coronary in your your eyeballs uh, what's the word I'm looking for you have cones that are pr like prisms that separate color and then the, the, your receptors that basically tell the brain what color that is or what you see, those could be damaged, they could be altered, they could be different variations. And so common things are like a genetic you know, thing with me is I'm red, green, colorblind. So I, I have him, I, I basically don't see red and green that well. So, and there's variations in between. So, uh, but your value structure is spot on. Uh, clearly the colorblindness does not affect that part. I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to understand the world as I personally do not know anyone. Uh, yes, uh, my the thing is it doesn't affect your values. Like my values are spot on. It just affects the choices of colors that I sometimes use that can screw things up. When I'm just on my own creating my own fantasy illustration stuff like, like the octopus and stuff I did, you, you would never know because I created that. I made up my own colors. I know how to mix colors and complementary colors and stuff like that, but that's about it. Um, animate drawing says, I'm going to bed. Good night. Hey, okay. Good night. <laughs> and then Maharashi says, is this something with rods and cones? Yes, it is something with rods and cones. Make him bigger. That's what I was thinking too. Um, if I have him looking out the window um, like this, And it's sort of a back shot of him. Then I can I can do this kind of kind of thing right here. And then you know he's kind of looking out the window. And then from there we can see off in the distance this and then we could do like a smash cut where we can basically you know, cut in, maybe cut in tight like this. So as, as this is going, we just add a little smash cut, or smash cut in. Smash cut is just like a quick whoo. In. It's like a blur effect. You go in really fast. Uh, yes. Man. Window shining. Yes. It can make the window shining for sure. Um, let's see here. that 
life painting. I watched industry professional illustrate years ago when I was red green color. Who was red green color blind? He is an amazing artist. Alice says, do you have difficulties with telling when right red light turns green and green light driving uh, when driving? A friend of mine also has red green color blindness, but he's managed pretty well with driving. Yeah, it's not it's not as simple as not seeing. I do see those colors, but I see them in their purest form in the color wheel. It's when you start mixing, like getting into tertiary colors or complementary colors is where I start seeing things. Like I, the other day we were on a hike and uh, we were, my friend was picking out these, these flowers that were some sort of herb that, you, that grows wild that you can eat that are edible plants, but they're apparently red. I couldn't see them to save my life. And she says, you don't see this? And I could see the plant that she was talking about but only in the sense that it was a different texture or a different look, but in terms of value, it was exactly the same value, and I just could not see the color. And And I said, was it was it red? And he said, yeah, it's like red. I mean, and again, I don't know what red is to them, so I'm just like, oh, well, okay, well, I can't see it. So there you go. So looking out the window, uh, we can have him do this last little bit, and let's see here. Haha, <laughs> we're watching a green color. Man, we're, okay. Uh, do you remember who the illustrator is? Marahashi says, hey, we're watching a red, green color, blind industry professional working right now, and he's pretty awesome too. I'm talking about you, Travis. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, I don't know how awesome I am. I'm just simply trying to live and do and breathe and work and be creative and have fun in the process and learn and teach all the while. So actually, you know what, if we're gonna make this red, I might as well start with red, right? So I might as well make this more monochromatic. So let's make it more monochromatic, uh, red monochromatic that way. Um, because in all honesty, you know, we can mess around with the colors a little bit here. Now, because his crest is more uh, yellowish. You would probably have a little bit more of an orange tint to this, along with some value. Alice, uh, Life Fantasy I says Alice L. Jones. He was Daniel Warren Johnson. I used to watch his old live streams critique critiquing other works for people. Oh, that's great. Uh, I don't know who that person is. I wish I did. Uh, I'll have to look him up and see. So again, keep it right there. orange ball of light coming towards him. Red, a little bit of white trailing behind. I am going to add a little darker background. Now we can start to see, let's make that line a little different. There we go. smash cut in and let's get that rid of that color tone which is right here Um, a little 
white for the backdrop. Put some stars in there just to indicate what I want. I'm going to use, where are you? Uh, I'm gonna use that one. Oh, too big. Too, 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 too big. Shooting off. We're heading towards it. Uh, this just sort of gives you an indication that he's looking outside. We want to put a little reflection. How can we do a little reflection? Let's see here. I can do it by using the shadow tone. Probably. Uh, let's see. Orange, red. Trying to see if I can actually get this to work. All right, let's see. Uh, I will hold on, guys, as I'm trying to figure something out. Um, blur, directional. Uh, that could work. Say OK. Um, Show the frame of the window, maybe. Um, I could, but uh, for this case, I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it. Um, if I decide later that I want to go ahead and do that, um, I might be able to indicate that uh, in my actual boards when I actually start blocking out the boards. I am. What I'm trying to do is get a sense that there is some sort of light reflection um, looking out the window to kind of treat it like it's. It's got some kind of effect, uh, reflection. And then uh, do a slight one more slight blur on that. We'll call this one and we'll wrap this one up because it's already one twenty seven. Jesus. Uh, that works. So it kind of gives you a hint of like maybe a possible reflection. Uh, I don't have his mouth open as wide as I should. That's fine. Let's do this. Uh, 
going to work. And put a little highlight right, right there. Yeah, we are 12 and a half hours apart. Marhashi says it's 127 there. Yes, it is. We it is it is late for you. I'm sure. I don't know why you're still up. So, um, there we go. So we have him looking out the window. We'll just write a little indication of him looking out the window, and then um, she here. Uh, Gallus looks out the window at approaching at a. Approaching Comet. Oh, that's not the one. I, where are you? Here we go. Gallus looks out of window at Approaching Comet. My wife saying you spend more time watching Travis than talking. <laughs> oh man, don't even. I'm not going to be a part of that squabble. No siree. Um, that's kind of hilarious though. Well, you know what? The the the, the irony to all of that is um, we've all been stuck at home for so long. That you know, as much as we love our, our our partners, it's always nice to be able to talk to other people as well, um, just to change it up a little bit. Variety. Um, so there we have it. So that is <laughs> painfully that is it took that long just to do those that one page, but I got to through page eleven. I can mark that off my list. Um, really, it's just kind of going through, and I'll clean this up. I'll make it a little bit more refined. Um, as a matter of fact, what I'd like to do is I go in, um, once I've gotten something like this down, I'll go in, oop, not that. I don't want that. I'll go in, just simply clean up some lines here and there. Things that I don't want in this image anymore that I can get rid of. Now I can just kind of go in and say delete. Uh, delete. Delete. Feels good to delete. I like deleting. Delete. And I think that's it, right? Where is that other one? Uh, layout. That's right. We're going to go down to layout. And delete. There you go. Clean that up a little bit. Um, oh, I forgot to do the top. That's OK. So let's clean up a little bit more to kind of give a more defined look of what I'm trying to do. Uh, Woohoo, another page done. God damn. So slow. 
So let's go to page two. You don't have to stick with me through this whole entire process. Um, I appreciate you doing, but if you want to ask me questions now that I finished this one page and I've kind of thought things through because literally I'm thinking on these at the of these things on the fly trying to make stuff up as I go um, to kind of get some semblance of an idea down uh, without everything's just coming from this here noggin and um, and then I'll go back in I'll start researching reference and I'll start looking at like Elon Musk's uh, Spaceship X which I'm excited about hopefully they'll shoot off this weekend and we'll get to watch uh, history in the making once again um, so go ahead, if you're still around, ask me questions. I'll look down as I read, but I'm gonna read page 12 and kind of set this up for what I need to do next. We've got, uh, again, like I said, we've gotten four panels done with some little notes. I write to, actually I forgot to write a little note at the top there in terms of uh, danger burning hot. I think that kind of says it all. Um, one of the things that I might just indicate to myself so I know that it's there. Um, where are you? Right there. Get down to one. Just for this over here. Make sure that that I just want to indicate make sure that that's clear enough for me as I go through and I redraw and recompose this because I'm going to change things up because right now some of the staging isn't quite clear enough but it's enough of a note if you would see if you want to see my when my how I scribble wait until you see my thumbnails they're they're there for me as, as personal references I like to draw on paper and then look at my paper and then draw. But for this purposes, I'm gonna bring in the script and then thumbnail on uh, on the digitally. Uh, Strugabaga says, how does one get a storyboard job in 2020? Should I just wait till this COVID thing virus blows over? You know what? That's a good question. Um, now more than ever, there are projects happening um, especially in animation. Uh, I think now is the best time to get a job. The question would be is, are they more willing to let you work remotely now that we are in this sort of confined state? Um, more animated projects are being made during this time because production for animation doesn't have to stop because of our uh, isolation that we're doing. We can all work remotely doing what we do, which is what I do. So es essentially, yeah, you can, I think you just have to look around and see what, what opportunities are out there. Netflix is looking for peeps, I'm sure. Um, they, they've got constantly a lot of projects happening. It's just a matter of how they're set up right now. They've needed a few months. Things have been really quiet, to be perfectly honest. I have not heard anything from anyone. Um, not that I've been pursuing any job currently at the, at the moment, because I will be looking for storyboard work probably sometime in June. To look for more uh, work because I took time off to do this and then um, ideally it would be great if I did this full time and just supported myself with online tutorials and mentorship programs and then I can just create and develop my own projects but the reality is that takes time and effort and energy and in the meantime I need to still focus on getting my bills paid so Luckily, very fortunately, I have been able to work with really awesome artists who call me whenever I need to pick up work. I just get picked up on a feature project or a TV show, and I work on that for you know a year or eight months, um, and that's been great. So uh, it's up to you. I mean, if you could afford to work uh, and hold tight, I would start really taking this time to take advantage of building a portfolio that's gonna get you a uh, position somewhere. And really start, This now's the time that I think you should start at least networking and sending out emails and uh, just letting people know who you are and where you are uh, and that you exist because people don't know unless you become like that little squeaky wheel. Mr. Aperture says, do you use the rule of thirds, the golden ratio to attract the eye of the viewer and some something important in a scene do use that. 
Uh, year of animation is 2020. That is surely the case, Alice. Uh, and I just rubbed my eyes. Luckily, I washed them. Sorry, don't rub your eyes. I haven't been out in public in a while, so. Um, rule of thirds, yes. If I was to, like, knock this down, I always uh, intentionally try to use the rule of thirds. I don't typically have... Uh, a character dead center unless it's a point of interest like the um, with um, her dancing um, Sue dancing let's see here if I can do this correctly um, I had her sort of center stage because I wanted her to be the point of interest for this moment um, and then for him right here I had him uh, he's not quite center he's lower center low, sort of lower end on this part to kind of show the perspective uh, and even then I have like a rack focus blur so your focus is on him uh, Duroc and then you see the kid uh, Sue and Bo in the background and if you look over here I'm always thinking of this concept what you're saying the rule of thirds which is basically um, this is your center point this is your rule of thirds it's always trying to think compositionally of having things slightly off center if something's um, you don't want something centered, but you want it to be a point of interest. You know, you can put her right here. So your center is here, and she's she's off sort of to the left screen or right screen. And hopefully you guys understand when I say left and right screen. Um, it's not left and right of that character, but it's left screen, which is what we're viewing. Left side, right side of screen. So we go left screen, exits left screen, or enters right screen. Those Those terms are being used in terms of your actual border your screen so this would be left this would be right this would be up this would be down so um, your center like I'm not gonna sit here and make her unless it's a direct point of interest for the story point and my, if I'm dead center I wouldn't sit here and, and have her unless she's in the middle of a scope and she's being uh, looked at by someone but I like to have things just slightly off center. So if that was the case, I might just go ahead and uh, have her like this. So there's my rule of thirds, rule of thirds. And it just, it just gives you a, a sort of counterbalance, a sense of uh, composition um, maybe there's somebody in the background smiling off in the distance like Bo. And then that kind of gives you that perspective point of things going this way. So rule of thirds. Um, so um, Fabiji says, you color easily with, with wonderful results. Great job. Oh, you're welcome, man. I, I, I Thank you. Um, I don't know why I said you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I am just simply trying to make things happen, get things done, and I'm sort of, I, you know, having done this for so long, I, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I think that's, that's the key with me. I'm, I'm fearless when it comes to making mistakes. If I screw up, I just start over again. And if I, I don't know, I don't have all the answers to everything, but I am here to try to figure that out. So page 12, top of page 12, I'll read this off and then maybe we'll do one before I head on out because it is 141. Uh, once we get to two o'clock, guess what? That's going to be 11. Okay, 12, one, two. That's three hours. So I went four hours yesterday because of this live streaming. So page 12, that means I'm four pages away from finishing, four and a half pages. So interior room engine continues so now we're back into the engine room where we have uh Bo, sue gallus derek and duroc the engine room is full of baboons now they've opened up they've unfrozen a ton of baboons the engine room is full of baboons it is a tropical nightclub with a full bar vine hammocks a beachfront a bonfire hot tub and enough steam to look like a giant sauna Holy smokes. Just that alone. Just imagine that, guys. All right. The writer, uh, uh, those Shane and them, they, they, they're they laughing at me right now probably because they're like, we wrote it, you draw it. 
that's the fun right there having to create this um sense of like uh tropical paradise can you know bar type party uh what type of colorblind are you carolyn says i am red green colorblind i don't i'm uh, no apologies uh apologize ahead of time but i'm i'm done talking about colorblindness for now um you can talk amongst yourself um, the engine room is full of baboons. It is tropical nightclub with a full bar, vine hammocks, a beach rum, a bonfire, a hot tub, and a steam and enough steam to look like a giant sauna. Bo, Sue, Duroc, and Derek are in the hot tub. Derek and uh, Duroc are sitting and laughing with Sue. Bo is on the other side of the tub alone. So I don't know if you saw that. Remember that little image I drew before? This was sort of to set the tone for that. I don't know if I have it in here or not. Um, I have it on one of my previous ones. Uh, again, these are my thumbnail beat boards. So I did an illustration and I'm trying to remember where I had it. Let's see if I can pull it up here. I am going to look at my folders. Let's see what you have, girl walking. Um, documents, arc, beat boards. All right. See if I can find it. It's not in that folder. So it must be outside of that folder. Arc. Right. I know it's in here somewhere because I drew it myself. It's not with the baboons. It might be with a PDF. All right. what I get for not having this organized the way I wanted it to be organized it's finding that one image that I drew that I did a posting of that you should see um, turnarounds nope it's not in there well shoot we're gonna have to get back to that so that's gonna be complicated in itself I got to do one image of an establishing shot that kind of illustrates all of that going on uh, so we have Derek now that we're, we have Bo sitting by himself, they're all in a hot tub like setting. Derek, Derek says, this party just went from pretty down low chill session to full on bumping rager. And Durant goes, keep it toasty dudes. And bad baboons shovel more coal into the engine. So that gives you an indication that we're gonna have some, maybe, maybe I'll have like a steampunkish style um, with the coal. So, that's something I can talk to the uh, the other guys about whether or not we want to have that visual effect, uh, depending on because do we want this to kind of give the feeling that it's running off of a steam type engine for the ship? That's totally uh, up for us to kind of talk over and creatively fix or keep as it is. And then we see as the baboons are shoveling more coal into the engine, the fire roars. Sue goes because we could do that cyberpunk kind of feel. Um, uh, or not cyber, but steampunk. Let's see here. We have Sue goes, I could get used to this. Derek goes, yeah. Duroc goes, yeah. Bo says, and I'm also in the hot tub because no one's paying attention to him. Like he, everyone's, he's been, he feels very alone. So he's trying to get, he's trying to overdo himself to kind of get everyone's attention. Bo raises his hands in victory. The engine room door slides open. Gallus runs in, covered in sweat, and a huge gust of steam ruffles through his feathers. Duroc says, hey, kid, quit letting all the heat out. Gallus like, what the? What did you animals do? And Sue whispers, don't worry, Bo. We're in this together. Gallus goes, Bo! Sue submerges in the water to hide. So she basically throws Bo under the bus. And that's essentially that page. So... I did do an image 
that kind of reflects uh, the overall feel of that. Um, we could have, you know, Gallus. Let's we can do this really loosely here. We can have Gallus coming in, and Gallus is sort of standing there. Uh, on what brush? I want to use that one, uh, and that that size go smaller. We have. Um, do, 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 do. A close up of maybe Gallus looking around. So let's have Gallus sort of a mid shot. A close up. He's he's kind of pissed. It's like, what did you do? He's yelling at the, the crew, what did you do? And in the backdrop, maybe we see um, a little bar happening, some bamboo. Uh, we've got baboon. Shaking a glass. Should make that bigger. If this is a kid show, we want, might not want to show drinks, but um we could also make see the thing is with this show it could it could go a lot of different ways you could make this more adult if you wanted to um or you can make it uh more kid friendly at this point it's it's definitely kid friendly for what we're doing See him shaking something in the background. I'm going to make this bar a little bit bigger. see here a little party hat going do you think there are more uh, do you think there's more scope to kid-friendly cartoons picked up by a network um, uh, you know what that that's a good question. I, I think there are there. I mean, it's if you want to have a show that has a lot more appeal, you getting a general kid friendly audience um, is you're going to get more marketability out of it. 
Um, but you know, then then again, look at look at shows like um, uh, Rick and Morty. That's definitely not for kids, but it's incredibly funny. Um, I still need to sit down and watch all of it. I've only seen a couple of episodes and thought it was pretty hilarious, but I've actually n never sat down to watch the whole series from back to back. So um, Joe says, I'm thinking that the bonfire would be the central focus as it's unusual on a spaceship. Things would radiate from it. I think that's, I'm thinking, just thinking out loud. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways. When I start getting into the storyboard uh, aspects of building this out, I might do that. Um, right now, I'm trying to build a situation where these guys are just, uh, you know, there could be like, um, uh, maybe there's a fire in the background here. With a little cylinder thing in the backdrop. Uh, these guys can be slightly out of focus. Like so. Say okay. So they're more in the backdrop because the center of attention is on him going, what are you guys doing? Um, we, we have that establishing shot right here, which I'll, I'll write in establishing shot of party. And engine room. Of course, there's a lot of stuff in here where it's showing that, like, the puff of smoke uh, or steam coming through when he opens up the door. Whoosh. Um, this could be just like, you know, what I had before is like, uh, you had these guys off um, sitting in the, sitting in the, um, sauna or I'm um, sorry hot tub and then we have uh, this could be a fairly bigger maybe we'll just make that a little bit bigger Then we can have those guys sitting there in the hot tub. He's sort of by himself. We can make this look more like bamboo. Um, we got to make this look tropical mixed with uh, technology like the engine room aspect. So. We gotta have that in there. But I'm just thinking out loud. And we have Duroc right here and Derek's right there. I'm just going to do a quick indication of that. Uh, we can have in the background. Bonfire going. And for this opening shot, it could be a series of montages where you just have like a shot of, you know, uh, Say, make this a cylinder. With the door open, and there's coal and fire happening in here, and you've got like a you got one shoveling in coal. And literally, this is how I would actually thumbnail out my, my initial thumbs when I'm trying to figure out a shot. Just lots of circles and lines. Uh, just to indicate something. Just 
see, we got Kai's in the background. s'mores action marshmallow thing happening. Having him sitting there. Uh, we got the open bar maybe back here. That guy's sitting with his hat. Even I got vines growing everywhere. Character in the foreground. Tiki cup, some kind with a drink in it. Uh, maybe have another guy in the foreground right here. Holding his cup up. At least it'll be a rough idea with what I want to do. Um, we got it's like, what are you doing?
using the hot tub. Hot tub, hot tub. This is just trying to think of bubbles. Again, I'm trying to get this loosely blocked out so I can have a sense of an idea of what I want where she's like, I got you. Don't worry about me. Or don't worry about it. We, I got you. And then she sneaks under. Um, Gallus starts to yell at them. I want to have maybe she's underneath. Maybe she sinks underneath. That's true. She could use maybe a snorkel, um, but I think the uh, it's just trying to find compositionally what's going to work here. If I should make this smaller, um, again, my quick gestures. yelling at him like that so we've got that aspect let's see here make that a little bit smaller
<laughs> Just took my dog out in the rain to try out the new raincoat and boots. What did I miss? Uh, not a whole lot. I'm kind of going quiet right now because I'm trying to problem solve a couple of things. So I'm deciding to go super, super loose, trying to figure out what's going to be the best idea for some of these shots. Um, they're not, they're just quick gestures to try to figure thing out, figure this out. The only thing that I've got going that I think will work right now is, again, um, maybe this one. Uh, and I also have to consider the light aspect like this whole entire th room is going to be this whole shot this whole sequence is probably one of the hardest sequences to do because I've got all this chaos going and the majority of this the next few pages are happening in this location so um, Black Panther says hey Travis why did you skip over the board of Bo trying to say something to fit in with them um, because I wanted to kind of skip ahead and get some of these other things out. Um, I could throw that in there, but I really just wanted to do bigger broad strokes. Um, establish where they are, establish that he's sort of by himself. Um, I mean, technically I could have it in this shot right here if I wanted to. Um, and I could throw in an extra board even. I could go in and do it here where he's like, um, let's see here. As a matter of fact, let's try that. Let's go and throw this board in here. And now this is page 12. Twelve. Also page 12. And now that I've gestured kind of those things out, and again, I would go over these and of course redraw them because they're just points of interest. Uh, I would say we could do him really trying to kind of fit in. Let's see, where does it say? It says uh, this party went from pretty to slow uh, to low chill session to a full on bumper rager. Directs is keep it at, keep it toasty, dudes. Uh, I could use I can get used to this, and both Derek and Drax said, "Yeah." And I'm also in the hot tub. Bo raises his hands in victory. Uh, that could be as simple as something like that. in bubbly water. Am I the right one? No, I'm not. Let's erase him. I'm on the, I'm on the wrong layer. Uh, if you guys are getting bored, I completely understand. I can't believe you guys are sticking this out with me. It's kind of crazy. But kind of awesome. Um, maybe he's he's just doing this sort of. I'm in the hot tub too. Bubbles. Uh, let's 
see Alice is saying, just drawing along. Well, Alice, thank you. Um, I think, I think, I think. It's like, I'm in the hot tub. Uh, no, we're not bored. It's amazing if you ask me. Just, just stream every time you work and just leave it there. Yeah. Although I always feel like if I'm streaming, I'm gonna have to. I'm sort of the host of a party of some kind. I've got to make sure everyone's got their drinks. Everyone has their party hats. Everyone likes the music that I'm playing. Um, yeah, it's just a sort of force of habit for me. So yay, and then uh, Lola says, good night. Yes, good night, Lola. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. Um, again, I'll be here same place, same time. Just working on these boards. So we got that. And maybe... This is the part that I'm trying to figure out, compositionally speaking. Get rid of this. She's got her party animal hat on too. Make that one more interesting. to play around with that a little bit more to figure out whether or not um, it's gonna be all in the acting this is when you can't you can't get everything in with your B boards you just have to kind of get the general concept in there um, 
lines. So if we colored that up, that would be, I would do, I might just do another pass over these, put these on a separate layer like this. And where are you? There we go. Grab these guys, move them to here, insert. Get rid of these. Uh, tone these down a little bit. And then I can go in basically and just do another pass over these. Right there, I'll just call these uh, a rough comps, uh, rough thumbs. Although I do like this one over here to the right. So if I go ahead and just grab that particular one. And maybe grab this. And I'll just copy, cut to brush, cut to brush and put it back up at the top. Uh, then I can just essentially keep working with that. And everything else that I drew rough, I can just redraw over and make them a little bit more defined. But I'm going to go ahead and color this and call it a day, guys, because I know I'm boring everyone to tears. So let's see here. Uh, it's very quiet out there, so I'm assuming everyone's uh, off in La La Land doing their own thing. Uh, meanwhile, I... I'm gonna block, let's see here, my layout background. Do a little orange. Uh, right there. Actually, there is a Get some of this background color in here. Oh, that's too. All right, now we can throw in some character color.
<laughs> I'm sorry, I'm looking down at what people are, are watching. Uh, yeah, well, hopefully you're not too bored, but it's okay if you come and go as you please. Um, so this is, I guess, an experiment for me too to see how getting used to the idea. I guess this is a prelim to like, let's say being on Twitter or Twitch where people just let their computers run or their com cameras run all day while people just draw and ask questions. It seems like uh, when I was looking at Twitch, that's exactly what people are doing. Um, oh. uh, I was just asked what my favorite cocktail is. I make a mean old fashioned and I use maple syrup as my simple syrup. Um, that is one of my go-tos. And my, my buddy makes a really good Manhattan, which I really enjoy. So whiskey is my go-to kind of drink. Uh, for those that like to drink whiskey, that is what I like. If you don't drink, that's totally cool. I just enjoy it, not to for the drinking aspect, for the taste. I really love just sitting down and, and having just socializing have a sip of that it's really good uh, let's see here so he's got something in the back I'm gonna go ahead and do something here I'm gonna go ahead and grab this section and I'm gonna darken it up just ever so slightly are you line right right there there we go that works better so again simple shapes simple composition we know the guys in the background are having a little party uh, all we need to do now is add some lighting effects, which was, where was it? It was right here. Um, do some red lights. And I want to, can we use that one still? Knock down the transparencies on these a little bit. Here we go. Um, steam, that's what I need. I need steam. I'm going to go to my pencil tool for that. And I might even... see here 40 that's not it either all right steam 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 how am I gonna do this I am going to go ahead and probably add it as an overlay here let's go look at my brushes again what do I got over here this that one tends to work Let's try that one. Let's see, a little white. Another one that we had in here that they give you, which is clouds, but I don't know how well the clouds there would work. That's an interesting look. If I added a transparency to that, uh, if I added opacity, let's try that again. 
that's a, a built-in brush that they have for this. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. Let me reset that. Knock that down. Opacity. Size. Ooh, I don't like that. Let's try that again. Where are you, Cloud? There you are. Okay. Uh, opacity. I think, what am I going to do with this? What to do, what to do, what to do. Add this layer. Bring this sucker down here. Man, i got so many layers in this now. And build it up a little bit. Right about there. That See, now that's giving a sense of some steam-ish type feel. Uh, and then we go to the next page. Um, I might keep this, what I have in here. So this one, so that gives a sense of steam, which is kind of what I want right now. And then I'm going to go into my line art again and just finish out that little thumbnail at the bottom. And then I'm going to call it quits because it's 2.30. Um, oh, Jackie. Okay, this is a new person here. Uh, Jackie Dutchin, Dutchin, Duchessine. Oh, gosh, I'm butchering your last name. I apologize. Learning so much from this. Thank you again for your dedication and for doing these live streams. Uh, you're welcome. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lon. You guys are having your own little conversations. Uh, could, you, could you possibly in the future do a tutorial on moving camera and TV paint and how to use the storyboard section? That would be really helpful because I can't seem to find much videos about it. Um, there aren't a lot of videos about it. And yes, I can. Um, I could probably do that. But you will be seeing my first video tutorial, which will be how to build a storyboard portfolio from scratch. Um, that is going to be one of the first, probably one of the first tutorials that I do for a paying tutorial through Sketch to Animate. Um, after you see the one that I'm doing for Calipay with Aaron's Creature Art Teacher. So let me see here. I want to make sure that I've got this color down here. All right. Now let's block this out really quick, really simple. Uh, I've got a little red going here. The only other thing that I'm going to add at the top here with their steam, that steam is, is I'm going to add uh, some disco lights happening. Again, these are quick thumbnails, so I'm blocking out the idea that um, he's getting close to the, the flames, so he'll have a little bit of reflection of the flames. If they're maybe darken. Did I just make that more green? Damn it. There we go with my color blindness. Frickin' hell. Uh, all right. Uh, 
All right. So we got that little thumbnail. Zoom into that so you can kind of see. Just a color swatch idea. And then up here, I am going to add my section. Let's see. Go back into these. Get some violet, like a violet color coming in. Uh, let's do a little yellow. We could probably go a little darker in the backdrop, to be honest, if I did that. See what that looks like. Or on top of that, I can add a little color layer. Let's do this. Then we'll do that. Cool tone. More red, violet. What brush am I using? Oh, that's why. Oh, still the same thing. Here we go right here. Go slightly darker and then blow this out. And then motion blur. Where are you? Motion blur, direction blur, that's what I want. And if I wanted to go slightly darker. Ah, that's perfect. Okay. It's not affecting that, which is good. All right. So some kind of lights. Um, right about, where are you? All right, so we've got engine room, we've got lights, him coming into steam, and then I think I'm gonna call it quits for now. I'm gonna finish up, after I get off the live stream here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these, these panels, which pretty much will end my page 12. Um, I did add in the extra I'm in the hot tub two aspect, which when I go in and do that, I'm just gonna simply come in and tie this stuff down. So if I go into my I gotta get out of that right there. That's what I want. I can either do this one drawing, which I haven't been using. Nope. I just want to go back to this. That's what I want. So based on this little quick thumbnail that I did right here, I can just go in and add in more.
Well, thank you, Mary Beth, and thank you, Kirk, for sticking it out. Um, I'm just going to draw this one one quick gesture and then call it a day. Well, a day on live stream at least, not for this. I will be continuing this panel um, and then probably posting it once I'm done with it. This one simple panel uh, that, I've got, that I've got going here right now. Post that and then call it the day. I've still got to do some more tutorials and working on finishing up Calipeg. Um, that that Calipeg tutorial is something that even though I finished the the actual um, tutorial recording portion of it, I still have to finish the animation animation that I have in it. So you can have the end result of uh, which is I have a mythical creature swimming in the water, and I also have a dragon uh, that I did uh, to illustrate some uh, effects. So I'm just going to do kind of a bubble. Kitchen Cat says, great for the stream. Thanks. Great job, man, uh, from Citizen Zero. Uh, Kirk, my, hey, how many hot tub parties have you been to? Um, <laughs> that's... You know what? I don't really know. Not too many, actually. So, you know, this is... I used to have my own hot tub at home. So I used to sit in that hot tub when I had a, a stressful day. So I'd have a party with me, myself, and I. <laughs> but not, not too many, I guess, hot tub parties, if you will. Uh, let's see. Where she's all excited to be with these guys. All right, that's enough for now. So, okay, everybody. Um, yeah, go to bed. Do what you need to do. I am going to sign off here in a second. I did not call Carlos today. Sorry, Carlos. I wanted to, but then I got caught up in trying to finesse my, my really loose drawings to try to figure this out. Again, we're doing a live stream, uh, continuing with ARC series, trying to develop this from scratch, from script, all the way into animatic, taking you through every step of the way while I make mistakes, have great drawing days, uh, people ask me questions, I hopefully give them some little tidbits of knowledge and information that might help you along the way. And um, if you're still around before you hang up, just come over here to, let me switch over to my big screen here, to the banner, here we go. Go ahead, and I'm gonna sit back here. Ah, oh, stretch my legs, see the, little reflection of my light. Um, if you get a chance, go to my Patreon page if you like what I'm doing. Um, sign up for that. Um, don't feel obligated, but it would be awesome. Uh, everything I'm doing is free uh, for now until I get to my workshops and paying tutorials, which will be coming up in the next couple of months. And then that, that will actually be when I start uh, having a section of Sketch to Animate where you can sign up and download and buy um, the beginnings of many tutorials that I'm going to start. Uh, but before that, mid-June sometime, we'll have our first Calipeg tutorial through Creature Art Teacher with Nick Birch and Aaron Blaze. Um, they will be 
uh, doing that hopefully by the end. And so I have the, my work cut out with me where I still have to work on finishing up some of those animated scenes, but I'll share a little snippets of those as I progress. And again, when you see that in mid June, um, you're not only going to get the, uh, Calipeg tutorial, um, but you're going to get actual files. Uh, the idea was that we will also get files of, uh, the animated things that I have in there, which is the, the flying dragon and the swimming uh, mythical creature that I have in there. Those I will be offering as Calipeg files for anyone that downloads Calipeg, checks out the tutorial through Air Creature Art Teacher. That'll come with that along with, I'll have uh, PDF, I'll have templates. Um, I think I might just put them in as Calipeg files or maybe just uh, that are already set up with action safe and TV safe uh, templates so that you can use this for storyboarding purposes when you're in Calipeg. Um, again, this is all using Calipeg, doing traditional animation, character designing, effects, uh, storyboarding, and concept art, along with full-on animation and coloring. So look out for that. And without further ado, please sign up for my uh, website at Sketch to Animate. You'll get a nice uh, illustration of my octopus. And then check, that, check out our story if you want to know a little bit more about what we're doing at Sketch to Animate. We do a monthly newsletter if you sign up for that. And we also have a little thing about our story, which kind of takes you, it's a cute little story that I wrote that talks about my, the creation of the logo, what Sketch to Animate is all about. And you also get a little diagram for free that talks about uh, the Ken Adams story spine through, uh, I've sort of repurposed that and made it the uh, Sketch, to an uh, Sketch to Animate anatomical story diagram. So check that out if you want to look at that. As always, um, Travis Blaze, thank you once again for being here. I'm going to keep doing this live. Uh, it's it's again, this is a slow process, but I'm, I'm breaking through it. We got through basically page 12 uh, and I'm going to have four more pages to go. So if I have time, I'm going to try to work on that over the weekend. Can't make any promises, but I'm definitely uh, got my list right here. List of things to do. So take care, everybody. Thanks again, Citizen Zero, for all your uh, critiques and feedback. Kirk Michaels, thank you. Life Fantasy X, Lon Smart, good times. Thanks for the stream. Hey, man, yeah, peace. Uh, and Nate, look forward to seeing you. Kitch Cat, Life Fantasy X again. Mary Beth. And let's see who else is out there. Anyone I forget? Ronnie, wow, you're still, if you're still hanging out with me. Nate, and who else do we have? Lola, who left earlier. Marahashi, Alice, uh, Caroline. We have Mr. Abator, Fabig, I7710, Alice Jones, Strugabugga. Life and well, I already said Life Fantasy X and many, many more. Lucretio and Gratz and uh, of course, animate your drawing, all of that good stuff. Thank you guys, appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys next week. Of course, you can always message me if you want. I can always answer questions after this. Take care. I'm going to do my little outro as always. Uh, transition to that, and without further ado, see ya.